I drink your milkshake. You are listening to the Billionaire Podcast Network. Welcome to Corn Fed uh, bonus episode <laughs> only on, on the, the Billionaire Podcast Network. Ka-ching, bing, 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 DTD, fill her up. I got to do my own station tags like that until I have, until I have money. <laughs> Dude, I didn't uh, know you, were, you had it like that, billionaire. Yeah, I, well, I, I had this idea that, like, I don't, I don't, Really, the idea was I don't know what a podcast network is or why they even exist when anybody can just do a podcast. And there's like all the tools are in place for you to just like have your own media company, essentially, like with YouTube and Spotify and Hmm. uh, Patreon and all that. Like, I don't I don't really understand what the necessity of like an actual network is. Other than like maybe it grants you access to different like sponsors and like a audience, I I don't I don't know, but I just yeah, because thought... I, I wouldn't imagine like podcasters are like plugging each other's podcasts like to this endless network, you know? Yeah, I I yeah I I don't know, yeah I don't know how any of that works, but I just thought, what if I just said I had one and <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a better idea. That was my idea. It was like, yeah, this is the network. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is sort of, in full, by the way, folks, I'm joined by a good, good friend of mine, the hilarious comedian, Jamie. What do you call yourself now? Jamie Gravit? Yeah, I'm, I'm going by the Christian name. Yeah, because you, you was on the you was on the Chitlin circuit when I first met <laughs> you. And you... <laughs> <laughs> it's a good paying circuit. Yeah, and I, I think at that time you were called like you were called like Jamie Gravy, Duck Comedian, Extraordinaire, Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> comedian with a K. With a K, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doug comedian. Damn, that's so funny, man. <laughs> Dude, yeah. It's good to see you, brother. Yeah, it's good to see you, man. It's been it's been a rough time for me, but I'm I'm building back up. We build back better, Dark Brandon. <laughs> We build back, back, yeah, man. I mean, shoot, yeah, dude. We've uh, we've definitely gone through our phases. I mean, the gravy era for sure. That was a Doug comedian, Doug <laughs> Doug gravy, as they called it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I remember it worked out for you. Like you, you were so you were somebody that the 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 gay alternative people were like, what was what's this, what's this white boy doing? Or no, that's not yeah. how the gay, that's not how the gay alternative people talk. Like he he is white and he should be taking improv classes. And then it's like you're you're touring <laughs> you're touring with Eddie Griffin at one point. So it's like all right, well, oh uh, dude. So I felt like I felt like the gay alt community probably hated me, but but I didn't really know because I didn't spend much time w- with them. You know what I mean? Because I was you know hanging out with all the uh, all the the people of color. Are you? <laughs> I don't know how to say it now. How do you uh, say it? I don't, Too yeah, close I don't, to colored people. I don't know what the preferred nomenclature is now. Um, I mean, I think... But I always just assumed... I just assumed they hated... They, the gay alternative 
crowd hated me because they're you know because to be fair and especially the more i look back on it it was odd early success which i think gave me a false sense of um expectation for comedy but uh since then i think it's brought me back down to a much more uh realistic view of comedy it's it's a lot of ups and downs for sure yeah yeah in this business which is a, is a funny business because at every level people think they're in the business <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> like, people who just do like open mics every night are like yeah you know the business I'm like what business <laughs> The, the business where you pay to perform that's yeah that's yeah. The, it's one of the worst business models known yeah. to man <laughs> yeah but but uh yeah i i guess it's because it's like one of it's an artistic endeavor so therefore the the virtue of doing it is, is means you're in the business i guess <laughs> yeah i whatever whatever you got to tell yourself to like i guess continue and feel like you're in the fight you know, God help you. Because at this point, I'm kind of in that philosophy of just like, yeah, whatever can can help you stay in it in a healthy mindset, man, whatever works for you, go for it. Because this fucking, dude, this business takes lives. <laughs> took mine, dude. It took mine. <laughs> you know, it's a, whoo, motherfucker. Yeah, it's it's brutal. Um, I, I don't know why. I, I wonder if, I, I always wonder if like there's other uh like creative endeavors that people venture into that consume them in the same way i've seen comedy just like absolutely rip through people's lives i, I would assume it's got to be this or like music i mean like it's the only other thing like, unless you're like a, a painter in the renaissance era that was just only destitute until well just only destitute you know like yeah. all those poor saps that died never knowing if anything meant anything and then later on they're like oh this guy was actually pretty brilliant it's like well fucking <laughs> i guess that's good for him now at least somewhat but he was just starving most of his life yeah yeah it's it's a long lonely poor existence <laughs> <laughs> but some interesting shit along the way we had some great times man in new york and i think about them uh, often and I, yeah. I tell ta tales and uh it was Good. probably the most enjoyable part and experience for me personally about new york because for the most part i hated it <laughs> 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 it's such a it's such a funny city because like what people think of as uh the romantic new york is is like <laughs> such a small small like square footage of the actual city it's yeah like, yeah it's like low, lower manhattan and then like pepper in a few neighborhoods in brooklyn and queens maybe and yeah. then the rest of the city is just a fucking war zone it's like, yeah. <laughs> that, that city is like com just a complete um testament to, to man's hubris and, and foolishness in yeah. the face of nature it's it's such exactly. a weird I, I place I, I wish just in one and just in one scene and when harry met sally i wish they would have just in one little part just shown like billy crystal looking at a piece of human shit walking you know what i mean it, it's <laughs> to break up the monotony of this yeah fairy tale they're creating in this yeah, uh show city billy of filth show billy crystal go to fucking crown heights go to like the utica <laughs> yeah. show billy crystal going to the utica stop at crown heights <laughs> be like no this, this is what most of the city is actually like yeah this it, is the majority of the city exactly yeah well it, that's what that's what messed us up because when me and you know stacy uh cordell you know who i was living with when when him and i chose to live there it's only because we went to visit and our visit was amazing like we kind of splurged and stayed in a nice place in a nice area we were like oh what's not to love <laughs> yeah about this place and then you know of course then we had to pay rent that's a lot of different story when you gotta <laughs> move to those yeah, places. yeah there's there's no there's no tourists going to like brownsville brooklyn to <laughs> <laughs> hey you now you, you want to go check out where the uh, polish live yeah yeah, yeah i'm I'm a, I'm from Indiana. I'm I'm here to check out Canarsie. I heard good things about Canarsie. 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's like all the tourists, like what, what New York prides itself on, what it advertises to the world. Yeah. is like such a small area of the actual city and then like the rest of the city is like yeah it's just, it's just a mad dash to survive and, well, and imagine too if like you if you went to new york and like the only subways that you rode were like the the, the nice like east and west side trains and you never took you know what i mean they're all like they're the the blue ones that are like more brighter colored and they've got the ac yeah. in them. and and, ima- and the, you but you never took like the darkly colored orange ones with no AC in them. Those are my favorites. Smell. I mean, that's the heart. That's the heart right there. Dude, I love I love the the orange, like the weird 70s looking seats. The like <laughs> that old color palette. Yes. It's the, so like, retro. Orange and yellow and brownish colors were yeah. Yeah, it's uh yeah, there's definitely uh bougie subways versus the 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 subways of the proletariats. <laughs> the fucking, yeah. taking the fucking l train at four in the morning um yeah or, yeah the l yeah Go or no, yeah dude nightmares I, yeah or like the taking like the the one or two or like three or four trains like deep into brooklyn like we're because like where we were living crown heights is like kind of deep in i think maybe I don't yeah, know. It, it is pretty deep in because, especially, uh, yeah, it, it's deep. It's like where it starts getting deep. I feel like I feel like that's like the first of the deep stops. Yeah, because I I was off the Utica stop by yeah, it's uh, even further. Yeah, by like Eastern Parkway, and that whole area was like you 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 might as well have been in another country. It was it was all <laughs> like like Caribbean West Indies, and like every every September they have that um. Oh like, yeah, that, like festival. independence. Yeah, that festival where it's like, you know, uh, <laughs> dude, and it went fucking late. I remember hearing that thing from my window, like trying to sleep, and I was like, "How this thing is a nonstop party, dude?" They fucking knew how to party. Yeah, yeah, no they, kidding. they and, and but it was also like every year at that festival, at least at least a couple people get killed. <laughs> I get. I guess. Goddamn. Yeah, I guess somebody I dies it. in like a like a like a dance off or some sort of like reggae related. Accident. Did you? So that's one thing. Did you ever see a dead guy? Uh, that's I never saw a dead guy. I, I never saw a dead guy. I would see people with just like horrific injuries. Yeah, I saw a few awful injuries for sure. Yeah, you would just see uh, you would just see somebody with like gaping open wounds. <laughs> Well, you remember, that, remember, that, remember that, remember that story I told you about that woman her, when her eyeball fell out? I told you that one. Oh sure. yeah, some yeah, you saw a lady's eye fall out. Her fucking entire eyeball was on the was on the subway station floor, the filthiest place probably on earth, just sitting on that. I mean, that blew my mind. But was it so crazy about it was everyone was around it was just like there at the park nothing's going on yeah yeah you put up blinders <laughs> you know, truly yeah you just dude i i mean you see it you see it on the subway all the time when like those uh those like dance guys get on the subway and they're doing like capoeira in <laughs> in the fucking subway car <laughs> and every everybody's just sitting there like <laughs> Just like, don't pay attention to this. <laughs> yeah, like, fuck, they're gonna come around here in a second and ask for something. Yeah, that's yeah, earphones are the way to go. You got a headset. You just gotta act like you don't. You know. It's, yeah. Yeah. God, what that a was a wild place. You know. You know that was something. I uh, the headphones thing is interesting because I see there's so many people in that city that walk around just like twenty four seven headphones. And I I got to a point where I was like walking around without them. Like I would just go places without headphones, and it was it was like, damn dude, I feel like I'm a fucking taxi driver now. I feel cool, I'm like really take, <laughs> I'm taking in the city. Yeah, you do take it in. You do. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't last long doing that. I was like, yeah, I gotta have I gotta have music. You know. Yeah, I get that. I don't know. There was yeah. just like, may I don't know. It, it, also, I did actually lose my mind, so maybe I was just going crazy. 
<laughs> yeah, know? I mean, this is true too. I think, well, I still think you have one of the funniest fucking stories. This is a tale I tell a lot, is your, I think you have the best rat story. Oh, the, what, the rats in my apartment? No, yeah, specifically the one you baked in the oven. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, yeah, the, I kind of got bamboozled on that place because I was told, <laughs> I was told that they had like a rat. And, and I was like, all right, well, it's New York. There's rats everywhere. Um, I didn't realize that most people don't have rats like in their apartment. Like usually that's <laughs> and this this apartment was like it was festooned with rats. It was, we were lousy with rats. It was, uh, oh, and God, dude, they had they they were camping out in the oven. Like they they had established their their own community, their own like section eight in the oven <laughs> they're just, everybody's just trying to find space in that fucking town they're like hey yeah. we, this is a nice warm spot yeah and so um i like i remember one day i was like this is fucking bullshit i'm not gonna let these rats win uh and, and so i like i cleaned up and i thought like i didn't see, i don't know i didn't see anything i like i just was like okay the oven looks fine like I went through in detail to clean it out, and then I uh, I I turned it on to cook something that like preheated, and and then the the entire apartment just filled up with like the smell of dead cooked rat. Oh, it was dude, God. it was so fucking nasty, dude. And, and did y'all get any complaints? Did anybody come to your fucking house like knocking like, hey, what the fuck is that? Uh no, it was such a poor area, and I don't I don't know if the smell got into other places or mm. if everything just smelled that way. <laughs> they were just like, yeah, it's normal. We might have all just had like whatever that virus is you get when there's rats around. Like we were just like numb, you know, like how black people can't hear smoke detectors chirping. <laughs> like we just were were kind of uh numb to the sound, the smell of like whatever that building was yeah um and, and also and also we did not change this the battery in our smoke detector as well um but uh <laughs> yeah it was, what i don't understand i still don't understand how the why the rat didn't leave the like was the did you close the hole up where it was getting through i mean how how did it just sit there and burn to death was it, you think it's like suicidal or it's like yeah fuck it i think i don't know i don't know what happened and it might have been that like yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what happened, and it, it might have just been the fact that there had been rats living in there for so long. It was like the smell, but I, I mean, I do remember like opening the oven and like pulling out the thing on the bottom, and there was, yeah, there was like a lot of ha- like hip hair and bones. <laughs> oh, so th- you think you just like maybe cooked already dead carcasses? I might have. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it was really weird. That that dude, that apartment. <laughs> I, I, I think he. <laughs> Like that landlord might have like gotten in trouble for like what that, because I think the apartment was like super illegal already. Like there were two two windowless rooms, and oh, um yeah, and, and just like in a rat infestation. Um yeah, it was it was a bad time, man. And oh uh, man, yeah, because that was like when you first moved there. That was like your first place, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a it, it's a rough city. I mean, the only I think the only reason anyone goes there is to just be like, yeah, I live in New York, but the, like your your um your quality of life, uh, at, <laughs> you know, it, at yeah. home is is a fucking nightmare unless you're, you know, unless, unless you have you, money, yeah, unless you have the means, you know, uh, yeah. then then it's fine. But like for a lot of people, um. It, it's it's such a fucking grind and it's it's such a yeah. hassle yeah it truly is i mean if you're yeah if you're like scraping by like most people are there it's it's very difficult yeah and 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 i actually and i just actually like went crazy like i i had like yeah a truly you... life-threatening situation happen to me so unfortunately it's so crazy and I was gone I, after I was already gone at that point. Yeah, unfortunately, I am buried beneath rock bottom now. But uh, <laughs> buried beneath, I'm compacted on top. 
Yeah, they somebody fracked rock bottom and actually cracked open the like geo <laughs> the the fucking geodes of rock bottom to to put me for like even beneath that. No, no, it can't be that. It can't be like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I get emails every day from like some some medical bill or something. I just didn't know I had because I was like in and out of uh different like psych wards and hospitals. Mm-hmm. As, as I was like going through like whatever was happening to my brain and so I don't even know like what's floating around out there but like I just get emails now that's like hey this is this bill has been sold off to uh whoever and I'm mm-hmm. like oh well then uh, hey that's never getting paid <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Same, same with all the fucking credit cards I took out during that time. Same with the student loan. Uh, gonna, full, hey, if any, if there's any debt collection agencies listening, you're gonna have to hold off until this podcast starts doing well. <laughs> Man, that's how I feel. Anytime I see it too, I'm just like, look, I it doesn't matter what agency wants to buy this debt off. You're all the same fate awaits you. So. Yeah, and it's it's like, I mean, like honestly, man, you know, it's so funny. <laughs> so many people, so many people are like complaining about the economy right now and how hard it is for everyone. And it's it's like honestly, you like you only need to be in a good place as far as like your credit and finances if you're trying to like have your own family. Otherwise, yeah. you can be a complete like degenerate nomad and just figure it out mm-hmm. when you figure it out. You know? Yeah exactly it's yeah you're right unless you're trying to like buy a house with a family that's when things start getting a little difficult that's those that's for true alpha <laughs> yeah yeah but it's it's like if if you you can as long as you don't have like people that relying on you you can fuck up in like unimaginable ways and then like thanks to the wonders of the internet and social media just start you know grifting yeah <laughs> yeah if fucking figuring out something What's, yeah. what's 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 your hat you got? It looks like a, is that Illuminati? This well, yeah, it is. It is like the eye of whatever the Illuminati thing. No, this this is some like CBD or Delta Eight company hmm. uh, that sent us uh, some hats at one point. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah I see it, you kept the sticker on. Yes, just like when we were in high school, <laughs> you got to keep this st- to get to get the pussy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the ladies want to see the that's fucking fresh. Yeah. <laughs> they want to see the sticker. <laughs> but I never even liked these styles of hats, like the flat brim. Yeah, I always I always preferred like the yeah, like what you got on, like a ba- yeah. baseball cap. Gee, I've been doing it's just the nineties look and it just always has stayed as the most like most comfortable that I feel comfortable wearing out in public. Because I feel, yeah. feel very uncomfortable wearing a flat bill. Like I would be like, what am I doing? I'm trying to you know what I mean? It's weird. But then this yeah. is like, this just me kind of make think my dad thinks I'm cool. That's all. This yeah, is. So you gotta be a shit. certain, you gotta be a certain type of person, black, to pull off the flat bill. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, fucking any fucking rhino shirt wearing individuals. Yeah, because I'll I'll be scrolling through TikTok every now and then, and I'll see like some clip of like Burt Kreischer wearing a flat bill, a flat brim. And I'm like, what are you doing? What yeah. You, you're yeah. like 50, dude. Yeah. It feels gross. You're a fat 50 year old. Why are you wearing this? <laughs> I, I know I'm wearing one right now, but uh, this is actually ironic. So that you're now not 50. I'm not yeah, 50. Yeah, it's, it's all, as long as you do things ironically, uh, it's now it's cool. Yeah, you know? exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Just like yeah, you with, understand comedy, you've done comedy. Yeah, <laughs> just like with with like Carhartt, uh, you want to wear the fucking Carhartt over, or I don't know what was going. On. I don't wait, know. What wait, wait, what's Carhartt? What is that? Carhartt is like a uh, like a work like a work brand, like a, like work clothing, like a mm-hmm. like real sturdy overalls and jeans and shit. Oh, okay, yeah. Like yes. well, it's like what welders buy. It's like welder clothing, <laughs> but then like okay. uh. All the uh, sort of like hipstery type folks. Yeah, of course. Very wary. <laughs> never, who believe like most have never tried doing hard labor. Yeah, yeah, like Carhartt and 
Dickies maybe is another one. Yeah, I'm about like, to say Dickies. I, I recognize those more like with the uh yeah, like the big work jumpsuits. Yeah. Or something. Well, I can it, see hipsters being getting into like gla- glass blowing. That's like the I'm, thing I would see them getting into. Jamie, I'm gonna be honest with you. I would love to get into glass blowing. I mean, it would be pretty pretty cool. Dude, that'd be tight. I remember but, going, man, it's crazy as hell looking. Whenever yeah, I mean, it's like a lot of work. I remember being a kid and going on my my family used to go to the there's a little town in Florida we used to go to all the time. And it's like the oldest town in a, in the country, I think. It's it's called uh, St. Augustine, Florida. And it's real nice, real lovely town, but I remember we like every summer we go there and there was there was like one of those uh, places that would have a guy like doing like live glass blowing. And I do remember thinking, this is the coolest guy ever. <laughs> Dude, he's making uni- like unicorns in front of us. Yeah, it's, it's fucking crazy. I, I, I know, I can't even imagine like how, because like art's already hard, like, like illustrating or like, uh, you know, any painting, anything in that realm of art has always like blown my mind. But so, like even just simple drawing. Because I'm not really good at it. Granted, I don't practice it, right? But it doesn't like just come naturally, and it's not something that I have the inclination or even will to do, right? And then you look at something like glass blowing, which is so much more technical, and they're still making these amazing like objects that you know clearly what it. I mean, that I don't even understand. I don't understand how that's like possible. You know, <laughs> dude, I don't know how anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, dude. I have no clue how anything works. <laughs> it's it's uh, I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah, that um I think that's why everybody loved that show how it's made, because it kind of made everyone realize like <laughs> oh yeah, I guess I guess I don't know how traffic cones are made. I guess I took it for granted that the, the, <laughs> somebody does have to make these things. Yeah um yeah everybody does something yeah there's I'm, everything you look at dude i'm fascinated by that like uh just sort of like minutia and like tedium that we take for granted the things that you never really that most people don't like put a lot of thought into like i i found a one of my favorite tiktok accounts now is the um like cambro manufacturing which i didn't even know who that was mm-hmm. prior to finding the account but they're the company that makes the, um, you know, like when you go to a Pizza Hut or a Chuck E. Cheese, those like mm-hmm. thick red plastic cups. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Like uh, those kinds of places that like classic, yeah. just like drinking a root beer. Thick just like a like a red, like, kind of like a red tumbler glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of. It's it's just like that thick red tumbler that you see at like Pizza Huts and Chuck E. Cheese's or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it turns out that's like an actual like model of a cup made by some company called Cambro Manufacturing. And I found this TikTok account that's just like the page for that company. And it's this guy who has a passion for cups and Tupperware. And <laughs> <laughs> that's like a cool dude. Dude, and yeah, but he actually he is cool because he 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 likes it enough in a way where he's like showing how this shit's made, like the, all the operations of this manufa- like this company i'm like this is actually pretty interesting yeah it is. i feel like guys geek out real hard on like factory shit in general i mean because like i think i like thinking about like the machines that make all that crap like someone had to think about this and then they create a specific machine that's just like like you've seen those ones where it's like just pushing it's like just pushing the thing like different ways and like twisting it all like yeah the, the, like it's almost more impressive than the product they're making themselves is the fucking machines that they're I had that same thought. To, you know it's like that's fucking crazy like who makes that machine yeah I've, I've had that same thought where it's it's like i i don't know anything about business but like when you're watching <laughs> like like uh like how like pencils are made or whatever and it's, it's like this big fucking warehouse with it's like billions of dollars of machines and just like this, yeah. this technology that no one can even wrap their heads around, and I'm I'm watching it going, damn, all this for fucking pencils? Like, yeah. <laughs> like how much how much money are you making all these goddamn pencils to afford like afford all this? Yeah, dude, I, I don't understand how we don't run out of like trees, man. <laughs> I was watching this thing about them just logging off all these huge 
fucking trailers full of logs of trees are just clearing forests and it's all for paper just sheets and sheets of paper and i was like and that's just paper we use wood for fucking so much shit i don't understand how we haven't gone through all the trees yet we might be running out of trees i think there's a lot of people (laughs) who are pretty concerned about that (laughs) yeah i guess it's been a popular (laughs) subject for a minute but i'm just now starting to realize uh I feel like we need to save the trees, man. Yeah, we might actually be having an issue with the trees. <laughs> I I'm don't all, know. I'm all about plastic nowadays because I'm not I'm not trying to use uh wood as much, so I'm really I'm all about plastic. Yeah, I'm I'm fully on board with plastic and uh <laughs> I'm I'm I want to return to like the age of uh, like leaded gas and asbestos. <laughs> yeah, we need to get back to the how what made this country run. Yeah, have you ever watched um like old ads for asbestos? Um no, like no, I didn't even know they advertised it. It's so weird. It's it's one of those like memory hold things I think in this country cuz like you just like if you think of asbestos now, you just uh, like associate with like poison. Oh, this will like mm. kill you or make you like give you down syndrome or something. Yeah. And, and but like <laughs> when it first came out it was being like touted as this uh like marvel and whatever whatever it could do like it had all these different properties that you could use it for and like all the old ads for it are showing people just just like holding it and fucking (laughs) like showing because no no one knew fucking kids playing with it and jumping dude have you okay yeah well have you seen you've seen wizard of oz right Uh uh-huh uh, you know the the scene when they're in the like the poppy field and it starts snowing on them. Oh yeah, yeah. That snow that you see, that's just fucking like shredded asbestos. No, no fucking way. <laughs> yeah, dude, they had no idea what this stuff was. <laughs> oh my god, fucking Judy Garland just fucking inhaling fucking asbestos. Yeah, they're just getting showered with asbestos, and uh, yeah, nobody knew wow. like how bad it was. Dude, they, there's a theory that the, uh, That's the crazy. Guy, there's a theory that the guy who the guy who invented um, leaded gas also invented um, some sort of like something, maybe like a bioweapon or or a pesticide or something. Hmm. Oh, it was chlorofluorocarbons. So the guy who invented leaded gasoline also invented chlorofluorocarbons, which are like the uh, like aerosol stuff that put a hole in mm-hmm. the ozone layer. And the, and there's like scientists that speculate, given the the amount of damage that those two things have caused, just like to the envi- like over the years mm-hmm. to, the, to the environment and like the re- like the consequences of those things existing, that this guy might be the single most dangerous organism that's ever lived. Wow, that's a crazy way to put it. Yeah, damn. Uh, I mean, that would make sense. Yeah, if it's caused that much, you know, yeah, death and damage to the world, like globally, that is kind of wild to think about. Yeah. Well, have you have you heard those theories about? Um, this is a, it's a fun like conspiracy theory, or or I don't even know if it's a conspiracy theory, but like the 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 idea that. The, those like decades when it seemed like there were just like serial killers that was like a mm-hmm. thing that you know the country was plagued by <laughs> serial yeah, killers like the 70s through the 80s it felt like so there's theories that the that sort of propensity for like violence uh is called was might have been caused by just the sheer amount of lead that was in everything it was in the really? air. It was, it, was, it was making people what, like, just kind of lose their minds a little bit. Yeah, or... like, like exposure to lead like that, like whether it's in the water, in the air, or like whatever, like it, it can, it can kind of like just mess up your brain and, and cause you to become like stupid and violent. Crazy. And it, yeah, especially in utero. So, like, if there's a pregnant woman at that time you know walking around Mm. and she's breathing in the fumes of leaded gasoline you know she that's that's ted bundy's mom maybe (laughs) like i don't know yeah interesting interesting that's an interesting theory because i definitely feel like there's less now i mean i don't ever hear about 
any serial killers nowadays you know what i mean now it's just no. more about mass shootings yeah they seem to they seem to uh i guess it's like yeah it's just the age of uh instant gratification nobody yeah let's just get a bunch out and just get a bunch in one day yeah just get it get it all at once instead yeah they don't want they don't they don't like the whole cat and mouse you know what i mean there's no there's no storyline anymore you know people yeah, have gotten they, away from they don't like want to puzzle. savor it yeah <laughs> but you know, say yeah give the people a entertain a little bit you know yeah it's like my mom would always get mad at me for eating too fast so that's how <laughs> 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 I'm a mass consumer. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, man. What, so, what have you been up to? I you, I saw that you did you did a pretty good uh, like scam lately, right? A scam. I don't know if it was a scam. It was making me like. Didn't you have you had a GoFundMe so you could buy like a mm. you go to Guitar Center? <laughs> no. Yeah. So I I I wanted to get a uh, uh. Well, I noticed this is what happened. I was like, I wanted to get a double bass. And because I started playing the the bass about a year and a half ago, and so I wanted to get an upright, right? So uh, I noticed online that this comedian had just gotten in a bad accident, car accident, and he was asking for GoFundMe for every, and everybody was donating so much, and I was like, oh wow, look at everybody's generous hearts. Maybe maybe they'll buy me a toy. I'm so <laughs> that's awesome, dude. Because <laughs> I saw uh, that and... it worked, and I was like, "Good for Jamie, dude." <laughs> that's like more and... impressive than getting a Netflix special. Is just being like, "Hey, can everybody give me money?" <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, "Sure, man." Yeah. Now, some people thought, "Hey, is that a little trashy?" Sure, but um, you know whatever trashy or not we're all gonna be dead so i was like if i can get this toy i'm gonna enjoy my life a little bit more before we all die so the people came to the occasion and uh i got some money it was it was not as much as like the guy who wrecked his car got but uh it was enough to at least get me a second hand base on marketplace and um i fucking love it dude i wish i would have gotten into music so much longer ago I mean, oh my! The, what it would have done for my mental health in New York? I may have stuck out in New York longer. Yeah, I don't know. I played music in high school, and then I just kind of like fell off. Um, music's one of those things that uh, I think it's like with anything. You just have, like if you don't have the uh, innate ability for it, um, then I don't know. You know what I mean? Like you can, you can, yeah. Get, you can you can reach a level of like technical proficiency with music where you can like right pl- play some ditties and have fun doing it and if like and that's that's great actually like you know as like is like a hobby or a, having like a sort of meditative thing to do yes uh, but I was like so obsessed with the idea of like actually getting really good at it and I just mm-hmm. like could never wrap my head around music in any meaningful way. In, in terms of like playing it or even creating it and so i was, mm-hmm. I was just so fucking frustrated with it um, yeah it, it can definitely it's definitely frustrating because like what i what I'm, I'm having a hard time with like reading music and understand again like understanding like those ins and outs but whenever i kind of just stop and i mess around with it and i play i really just enjoy it and it, i also and I, I think like the difference is yeah i don't I don't have it to put pressure on myself. Like I have to do something with this. Like it's more, more like completely just uh, for fun. So I don't put pressure on myself with it. I'm just enjoying it um, as a hobby. And it's like, I need it. I do. So it's so weird. You know, do you start doing comedy for so long? You get tunnel vision on comedy and you almost forget to like do other things for yourself. And like getting, I would just, hobbies are so undervalued. I feel like yeah yeah com- comedy is and i guess it's with anything in that way like you get obsessed and it like consumes you and you forget like yeah forget how to enjoy anything like you you stop even enjoying the thing you're doing <laughs> yeah yeah it's like i know like what the, what the fuck like so yeah it's just uh 
yeah. especially with the, the mental health thing you know like it's so weird because like right at right around the time of your um ep- your episode or what, what what you'll call it right like i had i had also taken uh or had a really terrible psychedelic trip and uh oh man i never valued my my mind so much more after that and like and, and to take and want to want to take care of it and to stop using like psychedelics i mean it was a weird kind of thing and i started making me think about all that like and what i hadn't started talking about and like or what i hadn't focused on in so long which was just like other aspects of my life because it just became comedy you know and i was yeah. like oh fuck dude i gotta get i gotta fucking i gotta fucking figure some shit out you know yeah i, f- I feel you there man yeah you got I I've learned the hard way how important it is to take care of your mind because you can easily you can easily become homeless <laughs> if you don't have like a fuck <laughs> dude I was so yeah. fucked I was like j- just like pissing myself and, and drooling I couldn't it was so bad oh my like, god dude. I don't because I, I I don't remember like we you and I saw each other in person a lot months and months ago I think and i was like still like really fucked up at that like i i was like in and out of just like this weird like i would be like kind of cognitive and then just back into like this like abyss of like i don't know i don't know what's going on or whatever. and then uh eventually i um yeah it, it just was like this slow gradual thing that i i like can't start coming out of it and then like the more and more i started like forcing myself to like relearn everything i was like mm. okay i think i'm doing better and then i checked the mail and it's like uh, oh it, uh, this collection agency is asking <laughs> <laughs> oh man back to reality real quick no well, i'm glad you're doing better man you look you look good and uh i'm i'm like glad i wasn't up there to see that man because that would have been hard to see uh to see you like that but I'm glad you're doing good, man. It's good, to, and I'm loving the uh, the tick the TikTok rack reactions. Those are fucking brilliant, dude. It was that that was such a like back against the wall idea where I was I was just like because I I like I've seen you know I I'm always like skeptical of like motivational guys and like what they the kind of stuff they talk about because yeah. it, it might it might just be bullshit. What, but it's good to hear, sure. Yeah. yeah, but I I saw Gary Gary V, the great Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, mm-hmm. talking about like the potential of TikTok as it is now. He was like saying that like this app is so like early on still. Mm-hmm. And I, I think he was like, I think people don't even like really understand like what it can do or the reach that it's gonna have. And he was saying like if I was if I was anybody right now trying to do anything i would be posting at least four tiktoks a day i'm like whatever Jesus. Like, yeah <clears throat> and, and so and, and i when i first saw that i just thought like oh that's some more like tony robbins jordan bill for like buy a ticket to my seminar bullshit right but then i started seeing more and more people um get like you know millions and millions of followers on tiktok and like turn their fucking lives or like change their lives like Mm -hmm. you know like one of the big store ones is that that guy kujin that guy in staten island who just eats sandwiches and drinks diet coke (laughs) the things that people are getting huge for are fucking (laughs) wild dude he and people he is entertaining he's just some like weird looking like chinless guido who is like sitting in his car and he's like, yeah, I'm here, you know, we we in Staten Island, Staten Italy. I got the fresh DC. I got the chi- <laughs> the chicken parm. And then he just like sloppily is <laughs> eating this and he's like, oh my God. <laughs> so like, okay. No, my and, favorite, my favorite new one is the the one where uh, it's just you never see the guy, but he's he's just got a camera right here and he's just basically dropping like little metal balls on this ramp and it goes down and like fucking crashes into metal bo- or glass bottles. <laughs> I fucking watch the, I'm, I've watched that all the time. I'm like, Ooh, that one's going to come out as a blue liquid. <laughs> that one's going to be a red liquid. That's just fun. I re- I, yeah, I love that TikTok's revealed that w- what all of us really want in, in, in terms of entertainment 
it, it's just different variations of jangling keys. <laughs> so like, <laughs> you know, like, hey, look at this! Look at this! <laughs> yeah and then and then there yours comes which is nice and now because when yours come along i've almost forgotten that it's yours for like the first few minutes or or seconds of your videos that's i think it's so good about the idea because all i see i'm just like oh man there's a hot chick with some nice tits and then you come over her face i'm like oh it's fucking dalton (laughs) dude that was making me laugh so hard just like the the jarring transition because i was watching i was watching one back and i was like Oh man, this has got to be horrifying. <laughs> Someone who's just trying to jack off right now. Yeah, I, well, I know that's what I think too. Because I'm like looking at a nice pair of tits, and then suddenly I see a nice pair of tits with Dalton's face on them, and I'm like, oh, oh you know. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that was fun. I, I'm I'm trying to remember like what because I I only recently started I because I've been like playing around with TikTok for like a, a couple months now, mm. and I only had like maybe 70 followers when i started like toying with it and i think um i i'm trying to remember like what like where that idea came from of of just being like the the titty the titty (laughs) somalia yeah it's it's so good i know i love how you really go into depth and like really describe it like you're like it's the back of a label on a wine like that's a good way to say it the somalia because yeah, it's funny. And I think your, it will. It, your language like, is great. Honestly, yeah, I think honestly it was like, uh, do you know who Martin Reese is? Ah, uh, that sounds familiar. Martin he's Reese. the he's the wa- the water sommelier. <laughs> okay, so he knows yeah, yeah. he knows yeah, everything yeah. about water, and uh-huh. like it's <laughs> like if you, if you just like were to tell the average guy that there's a guy out there who like makes tons and tons of money. Because he likes water, you, like you would think, you would think like, what? I mean, what? What the fuck does that? That's crazy. Yeah. But then, like, you watch him, and he's so passionate about water, and knows so much about it, and is actually like educating people on hmm. different types of water, and how a lot of these big corporations are just like repackaging tap water and selling it at a premium. Hmm. Um. And he's like a big advocate for making sure everybody has like he he's such a like an interesting dude that's like oh this actually is valuable what he's doing it's like entertaining yeah. and informative mm-hmm. and his his passion for it is like what makes it worth watching and so I was like all right so what if I did that but for for titties <laughs> yeah there you go there you go what do I have a passion for <laughs> yeah what am I passionate about jugs <laughs> <laughs> looking cans. Yeah, and I it was also it was also just like I I think sort of a frustration with the fact that like there there's and I mean I don't want to like disparage to these ladies too much, but it is like frustrating sure. that if you if you have a nice set of cans, you can easily amass a pretty substantial following and and make yeah. good money just having boobs. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's what they're realizing, and I think that's why. So- so many girls are starting to go over into like adult content websites because it's like so much easier now more than ever it's a fucking quick profile setup and suddenly before you know it you're making money now you don't got to go to your job i mean it's like it's such a temptation i think for the ladies to do that and so instead of it being a temptation now it's you know body positivity and stuff but you know it's like well hey well all right well do your thing but you know it's it's wild it is it is pretty crazy because there's like there's yeah there is like a synergy between tiktok and OnlyFans where you can like you can use tiktok to show off the goods without being pornographic Mm -hmm. and and that that that's titillating enough that you can reach out to hundreds of thousands of dudes that way and then funnel funnel a good amount of them to your OnlyFans page but dude, but some of the things I've seen on on fucking like Instagram, those reels, they're downright porn without nudity. Oh, I mean, buddy, have you seen these things? I have this straight guy... up busted mini nuts to Instagram reels and TikTok. I've been like, I ain't even gotta open the damn X videos. Dude, these girls are just cross-eyed with the craziest lipstick and just drooling on themselves and i'm like oh my i was just watching a golf reel two seconds ago and now this happened and it completely changed my plan i think they call that look uh what is it called i hiago 
I hear Oh, oh yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that term <laughs> in a, few, a certain category, I believe. Yeah, I think the That's, idea uh, is that she's getting, she's getting fucked so hard it's making her retarded. Okay, that that but would I guess she's check getting out. she's getting fucked retarded. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we need Jesus to come back. We do. I was just I got my Bible right. Over. I was just reading the Bible earlier today. Uh, nice, nice. Yeah. Couple of Bible boys, baby. Uh, are you trying? Are you trying to start a new podcast on the Billionaire Podcast Network? The Bible. Yeah, boys? yeah. I wanted to plug that. I'm glad I'm here on the uh, the Billionaire Podcast Network. <laughs> I wanted to plug my podcast. Uh, how to avoid going to hell? <laughs> Damn, I you- like honestly. If you, if you and I did a show called The Bible Boys, where it was like actual Bible study, <laughs> dude. <laughs> That's I money. think that actually, I, I mean, you think about that, two guys knowledgeable in it, in a comedian mindset and not real radicalist, uh, that might actually be pretty fascinating. Wait, let's, hold on, let me grab, I got the Bible right over here, hold on. Oh. Okay. Do I need to bust mine out? Do what? Do I need to bust mine out? I got well, you can bust yours out, but I got a um I was doing some research for a a, a rack that I wanted to react to. Uh-huh. Not the country, Iraq. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Quite the opposite. No, this is a Jewish lady. Uh Oh, Jamie, are you familiar with Vibe with Mommy? Uh, I guess not. Dalton, if you're if you're about to if you're about to introduce me if you're about to introduce me to a a, a new porn rabbit hole, I I, I can't I can't know about <laughs> this. I can't I can't be distracted. Um, th- there is a uh, a porn actress I'm quite fond of. Who calls herself her her profile name is on the tube sites so is Vibe with Mommy, and the I she it just like popped up one day on my feed like I was like looking for things to um you know tug off to, and it like the the <laughs> caption was like ain't like angry Jewish stepmother scolds her stepson before anal cream pies <laughs> you know oh and my I, yes and Holy i just shit. thought and i was like i was like why does like why is it specifying that she's jewish like was that like why mm. why is that the angle on this but uh it, is, that, it, is, that, is that is that because only jewish guy is you think like there's certain jewish extremists that will only like when they are watching porn only jack off to a jewish woman which is crazy to think about i think it's it, there's just something exotic about it like i don't know like, well, it's like you think it's like a Palestine guy, like trying to look it up. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. There's just so, something about like the, the like the heavy dense uh, breasts of a Jew, a Jew lady, a Jew broad. Mm-hmm. Um, the like the frizzy curly hair, the sort of like <laughs> maternal sure. qualities of a Jewish woman. Um, interesting. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, I'm a big fan of her. She nasty. She wild and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right so send me a link i guess well she i'm i'm gonna i gotta i'm gonna do a tiktok for her later today because oh, nice. uh, she popped up on my feed and i was i was like i can't believe she's on tiktok <laughs> i i like i saw her i love her dude it was, it was like when you see a teacher at the grocery store i was like what <laughs> she's yeah, here too that's funny um uh, but i found this dude, I d- I just be, recently, my bad. I'll, before we get into that, I, it's funny. Earlier this year, and uh, I'm hoping my mom doesn't see this because uh, she finds out I bought a Koran. I feel like she'll really be worried about me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I did. I recently bought a Koran. No, mom, Quran. it's it's just to burn it. I just bought it yeah, to burn yeah. it. I promise. I was just trying to get it out of that store, and uh, so no one else would buy this thing. But you know, no. I, but it's interesting because I was like, you know, I, I never have like read it. And uh, especially coming from a Christian upbringing standpoint, I, I, was, I was kind of fascinated by reading it, you know, and just like enjoying the theologies in general. But I am legit like 
no doubt I did not tell my mom. <laughs> I was like, she will <laughs> not like that at all. Yeah. Like 34, uh, still not telling my mom. She's not even Jewish. My mom my mom found when I was like a teenager, she found a copy of the Satanic Bible that I bought and like threw it out and started like putting crosses up over my door <laughs> and getting real freaked out. And which is like, and I get, I I can understand why she felt that way, but it's like it's funny, like when you know what the Church of Satan is and like who that guy was, uh, Anton Lavey. It was just like, it was just hippie bullshit. <laughs> it's not, yeah. yeah, it's it's not like a, a, any sort of like worship of it, like Lucifer, any real deity. It's just like. If you can believe, if if you believe it, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, really... and, yeah, that's what I've always heard too, and that because I believe that the ones, I don't know if you know this or if this is accurate or not, but I believe that the ones that actually worship Satan are vampires. They call themselves vampires. That's gay. It sucks yeah, that no, like it's crazy. It sucks that there's so much like cool shit that exists, like Satan, the occult, and, and like like, spoo- <laughs> like all this like spooky stuff. But the people that are yeah. like really into it are so like gay and obnoxious that yeah. is it, like you know like when you're in Brooklyn and you see a place that's that says like the witch shop and you go in and it's a bunch of fat bitches with like pink hair and yeah talking, yeah. About, talking about they're trying to like hex uh put a hex on. You know, I don't know Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, instead of like some like some like kid with like a fairy tale imagination wants to go see the witch house and wants like people in character and like spooky things with like things kind of bubbling or smoking over cauldron. No, That's what it's, you, want. you don't want you don't you don't want some fucking liberal from Brooklyn with hairy armpits. You know, yeah, it's just some fat bitch who's like, we're gonna smash the <laughs> patriarchy with, with quartz and sage. <laughs> Yeah, we, we got our tarot cards. We're gonna fuck them up. Yeah, uh, but this is—I guess, yeah. This is the this is now the the backdoor pilot for uh, the the Bible Boys with Dalton and Jamie. Hey, <laughs> I, got, hey. I got my look at this dude. Look at this King James Bible I got. It's got. I was like just this, gonna ask your translation. Uh, King James, is it not? It's not showing up on the camera. No, it's it's still the billionaire. It's... Put it over your face. Oh, there we go. Oh, I can. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Some good artwork there. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, I got this big ass King James Bible with with the Apocrypha, Oxford World's classic. Um nice. but yeah, this the, the uh, so I was looking at this this Jewish stepmother, so I turned to the Old Testament and uh I found this th- these couple verses in Isaiah that really stuck with me. Um it's it's Isaiah 66 10 and 11. <clears throat> And it says, Rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her. All ye that love her, rejoice for joy with her. All ye that mourn for her. That ye may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolations. That ye (laughs) may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. How do you feel about that, dude? What do you think? What do you think that's saying that we should we should suck on that's, titties? That's pretty good. I'm looking at a. I, I was. I just pulled mine out. I got the ESV version. I wanted to see what it was going to say. Maybe it was. I was like, maybe we'll do like a little bit more modern translation and say something like "suck on our giant melons" or something. <laughs> I think it's but a metaphor. No. Like honestly, no, I think I think clearly. this whole. I think this whole chapter is about. Israel or something. I think it's actually yeah. <laughs> it's about like God is mad or something. And well, if you want, if well, if you're you look and want go to the uh, Song of Songs. You got some, the Song of Songs. You got some nice uh, imagery, and there it's an actual couple. It's a man and wife talking about each other. About she basically talks about going down on them. Ooh, in Bible times, man. You know that. Yeah, you know that. You know times. his. You know his dick stank. Or maybe it's she, she. Maybe he's going down on her or something like that. I, I can't remember, but it's Song of Solomon or Song of Songs. Is it Wisdom of that. Wisdom of Solomon? It, it's not. It's not Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes nuts. You know. Hey. Oh, there. Yeah. It's right after Ecclesiastes. Song of Solomon. 
there are, this, this is all, this is all uh about fucking doing each other really yeah solomon admires his bride he starts talking about like her pussy oh nice dude because look, look at this you're yeah you're uh, look on song of solomon chapter four verse three like your lips are like a scarlet thread your mouth is lovely your cheeks are half pomegranates behind your veil your neck he keeps going down your neck and then your two breasts like two fawns twins of a gazelle nice identical titties that's what i'm talking about <laughs> Nice, dude. She got them symmetrical sallies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find where he goes down and talks about her fucking dirty muff. Yeah, it's been a while. I, I don't, I don't see that one in here. I, but this, this, there's also like a bunch of extra stuff in here, like all this apocrypha. Um, so I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we should. Dude, I I love the idea of doing a Bible study show. <laughs> yeah, how should we? Oh wait, wait, there it is, another one. What? No. Like on honestly, on it. Like here's here's the idea. This yeah, is what's like, the idea? Uh, Nat, see, this is why we did this podcast today. I said to myself, self, I gotta reach out to Jamie. <laughs> I said to myself, self, I gotta reach out to Jamie. I gotta do something with him. And I, I just had this thought, and I, maybe it was the divine speaking to me. Because l- look at what we've discovered: two Christian boys, each with Bibles, d- coming a- coming upon, you know, the this idea Bible study, the Bible boys, Bible Bible study, and we like honestly. The like what would be a good idea is like you know how there's like all those um like uh but like read the Bible in a year yeah uh, yeah <laughs> you know, like stuff like that like it honestly it would be cool it would be fun to just go through like chat like chapter by chapter the entire book just start at Genesis one. Yeah, we do. We could do. We could do something like that. Just start. Yeah, start from the beginning because I know some of the reading plans they'll have you read four different areas at a time, so you progress in four different ways. But I. But if we're doing this, yeah, I think it's it'd be good if we just start from the fucking get go and just yeah. take it all away and, and like yeah, we could read. Uh, yeah, we could do like uh whatever the the thing is the plan. And this that'd be fun, dude. And and but and so here and here's okay, so here's the real idea. Like the, I do like this idea of the podcast, but now we've incorporated scripture, religion into it. We get it going, and then eventually we can, like, we could say the the Billionaire Podcast Network is a church, tax free. You know what I mean? Kaching. Now we're talking. Ka-ching, now ka-ching. we're talking. Yeah, because I've been wondering how, like, like you know, because God's always going to, prov- or they they say God provides, but I only saw Him providing for like the pastor. And it's about time we started taking advantage of this. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's I I wonder Bible I, for bucks, Bible for bucks. <laughs> I wonder if that would <laughs> like if that would if you could do that like if if you like let's say you had like some sort of business or LLC or whatever, and there was like some aspect of it that was like religious, like you had like a like a certain <laughs> amount of people that were like uh, consuming your product. Or, or like yeah. for whatever reason, because of it, it's like religious aspect. If you could like claim that what you're doing is like a church, a virtual church. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how the breakdown works. Do you have to have an actual building, a structure? God, uh, God doesn't say so. That's God, what I, that's what God says exactly. that where wherever your heart is, that uh, is where I am. I am also. Right. Yeah, we're t- or two or we're or two or more are are gathered. I mean, this is it. So yeah. J- Jesus is here, my dude. Welcome to church, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I didn't expect this today, but hey, it's all good. And dude, we're doing it on the on the true Sabbath. T- yeah, it's a Saturday, yeah. <laughs> is that what they then that what they say? I think so. What if it's been like it's been like Tuesday this whole time? Oh, you, because of the way the calendars are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we just fucked up really bad. They're like, actually, the whole time the Sabbath has been Thursday. We're like, what? That's not <laughs> a right day for the Sabbath. 
Yeah, it's a the, dude. The Jewish the Jewish people have a lot of damn rules. It's like if if Man. you're if you're Christian, the only rule is just ask for forgiveness at some point before you die. Just say, mm-hmm. Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me of all of my sins. Uh, and I, I love you, Jesus. Oh, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, <laughs> welcome to heaven, brother. <laughs> but then it's, then it's well, like, it's like if you're Jewish, it's like you got to wear a fucking three piece suit with a hat, and you can't use the oven on Saturday. And yeah, it's a whole thing. And, you're and me. Well, it, it, well, if we go through the first five books, so when we, and that'll be the Torah, and at that point, that'll be the Jewish portion of uh, <laughs> of the Bible boys, and then we can get on to the Christianity aspect. Yeah, and then we and then we get on to the real Bible. Like honestly, <laughs> we you can get to like what the the real Bible is. Yeah, exactly. But that was always. Uh, I mean, that was always the feeling in church as a kid. We're like, we we would be studying like Leviticus or Deuteronomy or some shit. And then, like, and then, like, reading the New Testament and, and, like, understanding that story. And I'm like, so, what, like, why are we also reading about, like, how to properly sacrifice a buffalo? Or, like, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, I, don't know, I don't understand, like, how any of the, this, like, old Jewish uh, texts and, and, and what they have to abide by pertains to, like, what we're doing. Especially yeah, since there is, especially since it's so contradictory, that it's it's like as a young kid, it's just like really confusing. It's it's like I don't so sure. wait, so wait, you're like we're reading all this stuff about like you can't mi- like sew two different kinds of fabrics together, and you can't have your fucking <laughs> meat meat and cheese on the same plate. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but then, but then like Jesus comes along and he's like, hey guys. Have, have a sandwich if you want you know put, yeah. put some cold cuts and some mozzarella together. it's fine yeah. it's fine uh, yeah well i think well it's interesting too i've heard this theory about something before i, I used to have this book in my heavy bible thumping days i used to have this book called 101 scientific facts and foreknowledge and it was basically just these the scriptures and references to discoveries that man made over time with uh technological advances or new discoveries that then they would discover oh this was actually in the bible the whole time and one of the ones was about some of these uh, rituals and practices of the jewish law the law of moses and um and um all these rules and especially when it came to the meats and how they handled it and what's interesting about it is they discovered that a lot of the washings and things that they would do or or rules that they would have were mainly because of sanitary issues that we discovered later re- reasons why like after a certain amount of days certain things would go bad and you'd it would be spoiled so it's interesting to think about either that they they figured this out some way somehow because people kept dying and they're living in a wilderness right for 40 years and so they're maybe trying to rediscover like what what is going on with all this fucking food? Same thing with circumcision. Like they did, they figured out to circumcise the baby like after a week, and you know, like now we understand why it's important to do that because it's like at the best moment to be circumcised. So it's like all these weird things. It's like I mean, how would they know that? And maybe that's testament towards uh, the truth of uh, the existence of God. You know, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. That that also reminds me of one of my favorite vibe with mommy videos. Where she's uh she's playing a doctor, like a like an older MILF kind of doctor. And uh-huh. and she she's holding this guy's uh, cock in her hand and she says, Oh, you have a really nice circumcision. And then she's like inspecting it. And she's like, actually, I think I did this one. And then she starts sucking his cock. Oh hell yeah! So she's so because he's he's like her, uh, just some young guy, and she's like an older doctor, an older Jewish doctor, and so she might have actually been the one to have circumcised him when he was a baby, and now she's sucking his cock, mm. you know. Oh well, yeah, well I kind of yeah that is kind of hot actually. It's like <laughs> oh you you've been around <laughs> since day one, like you you look at what I've become now. You saw this puppy in its early stages. Now look at it develop. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and there is something biblical about that, about like you, you know, having sex with um 
you know someone that you have like this like maternal relationship with you know because there, there was a lot of incest in the, there's so there much there was incest. definitely some incest there was clearly a lot of it i mean yeah i i remember being a kid and being like one of those kids in church that i guess was like really curious and kind of like skeptical or, or rather just or, or just confused really because like re- going over the book of genesis and just like bugging my youth pastor like wh- okay so like where where are all the people like what do you what do you talk like so there's adam and eve or, or am i to believe that the entire global population was spawned from just these two people and he's like yeah and i i'm like okay so that means like it's it, like it's just a bunch of in, it's incest, right? So they have kids, and then the and then like one of her sons fucked like fucks a Eve, and then yeah. and then the sons the sons and daughters are fucking each other, and I'm like, what well, I like this? Can you an- please answer my questions? And he, he was yeah. like, he's like, it's, but you know, it's just don't even don't even trip on that. <laughs> yeah, well, there's so many speculation too about you know even like. uh kind of demigods right when you're you're familiar with like the seraphim you know that right some of the ones that came down to, and maybe angels that had sex with people and then made maybe possibly giants i mean that i've always like been fascinated to know like which what of all that is kind of true or Yo. or were there giants you know or that'd be crazy do you know do you know who um darren aronofsky is mm-hmm He's that director. He made Pie and Requiem for a Dream. Oh um, yeah, yeah. He's made a bunch of movies. I what was it? I don't know what his most recent one was. The Whale was his, uh, the the Brendan Fraser oh, okay. movie that just came out. God, I hated he, that. He he movie. made a movie years ago that I think like critically, I I, I think like the audiences maybe didn't like it, but in retrospect it's actually a pretty balling ass movie and it was called noah and it's the story of noah is that the one um, with russell crowe yeah and in the movie god i did not like that one at all do you but there, dude there were actual fucking like rock giants in it like in the movie there's like yeah. this like weird mythology he puts in it that i think pissed off a lot of like middle america that were like what is what is all this? And I remember watching it, thinking, "This is okay." Now I can get on board with this version of the Bible. Fucking rock monsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where I lost it. I was like, "What the fuck is all?" Is yeah, I feel like exactly what you said about it is what I hated about it because it's like I feel like he was just throwing a bunch of random stories into like the story of Noah, and I'm like, "Well, that's that's a weird thing to do. If you're going to do the Noah, do the Noah one. If you want to make it like this weird mixture of different fables." all then you know do something else that's what kind of lost threw me off about it yeah and then it became like this action thriller of him like fucking taking on those hell yeah them. I'm like what i'm i'm you on board with that i like that <laughs> you like it I, well, yeah i think it's you i like think it. it's you're cool supposed like, you're supposed to like it i think it's cool and, and it kind of goes with like what you're saying because what, what in the movie it was like those rock giants they were like angels or something that yeah, I, I guess know. maybe there was some sort of, I don't know, possession of guess, something some spirit, spiritual being manifest, pops. Yeah, possibly. That's what I'd assume. But well, I don't know why they'd be against Noah. Were they? I just remember. I it's been a long I can't time remember since actually, I've seen the movie. Yeah, I just no, remember no. there being like this cool scene where he was just like walking with his family through this like field, and there's just all these like rock giants surrounding them, and. Oh. And it, him and his family were just like, oh, yeah, he's, you know, this is where the rock giant, you know, we come through here all the time. <laughs> oh, oh, they were cool with them. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember that. I just remember, yeah, it has been a while. Well, maybe I'll rewatch it and give it a uh, a new look. See, I remember it being good. I mean, I just, I remember like a lot of people hating it because of it, the sort of like liberties that he took with it mm-hmm. in, in that regard. But it's also like, I mean, it's, honestly, it's, it's just really fucking weird that Darren Aronofsky made a Bible movie. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's, knowing what his body of work looked like up until that point, it's like, yeah, this would not. This is not the guy. If I was a studio executive, this is not the guy I would hire to make a Bible movie. Oh, it's so frustrating that they don't make more Bible movies, and I know why. I mean, I know like it, it's like, look, all right, if the if the 
Jewish film industry doesn't want to like advocate for maybe like some maybe New Testament Christian forward movies, then at least make some ones from the Torah. Like you could still make a good Garden of Eden, Moses, Exodus. <laughs> you know. Well, did you watch? A good movie. Did you watch Good Omens on Amazon? Uh, uh huh. It's the it's pretty. The first season's really good. Uh, it's based on a book by uh, Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. It's about the Antichrist, where um, the, like, like like Revelation times and shit. Well, it, it's it's sort of like a like buddy cop comedy, but the mm. buddy cops are an angel and a demon. They're like friends with each other, and um, the whole plot is like the Antichrist is born, and heaven and hell are gearing up for Armageddon, and so the plan is that the antichrist is going to go home with uh this like really wealthy affluent family that has like all these connections like everything in the world mm. uh but there's like a mix up at the nursery so the antichrist is just like raised by uh, just a nice loving family who cares about him and there's like none of this like this the stuff that they had planned on happening didn't happen because they got swapped out so the actual kid that's supposed to be the Antichrist is being just raised in in just like a nice loving home. <laughs> um, that's interesting. Yeah, and uh, I think I'm remembering it right. I'm, the plot is that there's a mix up at the nursery. It's, right, right. It's a it's classic. Like, it's a classic Freaky Friday situation. Yeah, and, and so and so like <laughs> as Armageddon is starting to happen. This uh, this angel and this demon, uh, Aziraphel and Crowley, don't want Arm like they don't want Armageddon to happen because they like life on Earth. Like they've they've like given up on actually doing what they're supposed to be doing, and they're just like eating sushi and drinking coffee and shit. And they're like, yo, being a <laughs> being a human's nice, dude. This is much better than having to deal with all the other bullshit. But yeah, like, of fucking bullshit. Yeah, but in in the in the show there's like tons of like flashback sequences to like all these different moments throughout the Bible. Oh, that's um, pretty cool. Yeah. And there's a really funny one where um, it's the crucifixion and the angel is like crying, watching this happen. And then the demon comes up and he's like, so what did he do to like to cause this? And the angels like, he told everybody to be nice to each other. And the demon said, Oh yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> 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 interesting huh what's it what's it on it's on amazon amazon you said all right man i'll have to check that out that yeah check it it's a it's a the first season's good uh second season is pretty pretty lame but uh yeah the first season covers the whole book like that's the the full book that i think they published in like the 80s the book is really mm-hmm. good too it's hard to keep a concept like that going in a series, I feel like, too. But, you know, but like the way Mel Gibson did, like, Passion of the Christ, I would love to see that, like, that same style, but, like, for, you know, the Daniel and the Lion's Den kind of story or situation. Yeah, I, mean, I know like, what really you mean. They the used, characters. That'd be they so used cool. to make epics like that. Yeah, they don't really make that kind of movie anymore. Those, like, uh, big, like, Bible epics. Um, yeah, that'd be fucking awesome. No, and it's like now it'd have to be like, what if, you know, like, what if the Hulk gotten like went back in time and had yeah, to... the Hulk, the Hulk versus Jesus, the Hulk, yeah, is it like, what if the the Avengers, uh, <laughs> the the Avengers BC is the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Avengers uh, BC, but oh, man. all that might be ending actually. I saw that 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 new the the Marvels the the Lady Marvel movie. It just opened this weekend and mm-hmm. it is ma- like making no money apparently there's just too many they just oversaturated them so much with or they saturated the, the world with too many fucking marvel things man yeah is and beyond that it's also like it, it's a it, you know i i think <laughs> like it's a cool idea to have a series of movies that are all like connected to each other in that way yeah um like i guess i i don't know if anyone had ever done that before that like to have these like big blockbuster movies that are all like weaving in and out of each other mm-hmm. and i think like the logical conclusion to that was in game it was it was like you guys really stuck right. the landing here 
and, and now they're like trying to keep it going and it, like i think for like most people it's like no nah, there's like way there's just too much to follow at this point it's like all this yeah. shit is like it connected and I gotta watch this to understand that, it, like blah blah it's blah. Way, it's, it's way more than like like a simple like Star Wars thing where it's like, look, you can just watch one through nine. But they're trying to do the same shit. Disney's fucking horse shit. Dis, you know, Star Wars crap. They're now they're doing that same thing. They're branching <laughs> yeah. off all these side fucking stories. None of them are fluid with like the lore of Star Wars at all. It's so frustrating. Yeah, it's like well, welcome, to, yeah, welcome to comic books because comic books have been doing this shit forever. That's why like. It's honestly why point. comic books kind of suck now. It, it, yeah, <laughs> have have for a long time. Is the yeah. fact that it's like everything is so it, like uh interconnected and has like all these like crossover stuff happening that mm -hmm. it's like I just want to read Daredevil. I don't want to have to go read like some fucking Spider Man bullshit to try and figure out what's like why Daredevil is. You know, you know what I mean? Like it, it's yeah. Well, they're and then also it, like, like, episodic in a weird way. I, dude, I have been on that for a while now. Like, there, the the uh, episodes went away. Like now, everything yeah. is serialized. Like it, it, every TV show is narrative driven, and yeah, it is so like uh, serialized now that there, there's no more like episodic TV, and, and so they have like these big budget like ten hour movies that just suck shit. Cause yeah. that whole that whole prestige TV thing is so fucking hard to pull off mm. that like you know when when you just have like a ten hour scripted series it's it's like well it's long I mean yeah you could sink into the couch and watch this for ten hours that doesn't mean it's like any good or like particularly yeah. entertaining <laughs> like I, I watch like if I watch Stranger Things I'm like th there's nothing about this that's grabbing me. This right. is like this. I don't find this entertaining. This would well, just be mystery that never gets answered, and you're like, oh, "This is annoying." Yeah, and it's like my go-to is always the X Files, where it was like 22 episodes a season, and like maybe eight of them were like the overall narrative for that season, like the the through line. But then every you know the rest of the episodes were just Monster of the Week, so you could j yeah. you could like pop in and pop out like wherever yeah. on that show and have a pretty good time watching it whereas yeah. like everything now is like no i mean if you try and show up here in the middle of season three you're gonna be pretty fucking lost <laughs> well i think and i think that's what uh black mirror did a great job with that because black mirror you, same thing you can just jump in and out they don't yeah I mean, it is kind of its own world obviously I yeah that's an exist, anthology yeah. show so that it's like good. that's really fucking hard to pull off because you're talking about a show where each episode is an entirely new cast. <laughs> it's like God, it, no shit. That's crazy yeah. too. Yeah, that it's crazy when those shows happen. And it's it's amazing when they're able to pull it off. Like, dude, the Twilight Zone is such a fucking like marvel of television. Like how the the mm. stand like the the quality of episodes, like there's very, very few episodes of that show that are like kind of bad. Yeah, yeah, they're all pretty damn good. But yeah, you got a show that last that ran like I don't know how many episodes, probably hundreds at that time. I um, imagine. I don't know, but you're talking about like each episode is an entirely new cast, uh, its own script, its own like self-contained. Just like Im imagine, like Im imagine, like writing for a show where like you got let's say there's 20 episodes in the season and each episode it features none of the characters from the previous one it's an entirely new story yeah i know it's that so you bizarre. have to that you have to write <laughs> and and not only that but write it and edit it and trim the fat off of it so that it fits into this like time slot that like i don't oh, like yeah. rod rod serling is is a fucking hero for be, pulling that off because that's that's crazy like how many yeah, the time the timing part is an interesting one for sure because yeah these other ones they can be a little more more loose you know with their timing now that it's on a streaming service you know yeah yeah which i think is like kind of maybe a detriment that now you can be like yeah one episode's 42 minutes another episode's an hour and a half and yeah. i think like the the maybe the constrictions of actually having a fit like having to fit a show within these parameters 
I think might make it like would make it better, <laughs> like serve it better if you were forced to like trim it down and edit it to to a tight like forty five minute program. Yeah, um, no shit. Yeah, because was there a single episode of The Sopranos that was a fucking hour and a half long? <laughs> you know? Right, no, it was all within its yeah whatever thing. Dude, I dude, I gotta piss so bad. One one sec. All right. All right, well, Jamie's Jamie's going to pee. I'll go ahead and do plugs. Uh, Patreon.com slash cornfed with Dalton Pruitt. Uh, we got the $5 tier, $10, $15. But the most important one is the $25 tier, which gets you the Fraternal Order of Cornfed decal uh, after three months of having been subscribed to that tier. So it is $75 for the sticker uh essentially and but once you subscribe to the tier you're welcome to message me a list of your enemies and i will call for a jihad upon them on the show and then if if you do receive the decal uh if you say subscribe for the three months and get the decal you're welcome to actually be a guest on the show so we'll interview you uh, we'll hang out with you. We'll get to know you. It'll be, it, 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 this is bold new territory in podcasting. Uh, along with that, follow me on TikTok to watch my uh, TikTok rack reaction series where I review boobs. Um, be sure to spread uh tell all of your friends about this show it's uh i it's it's i'm putting a lot of work into this and i need this to, i need this to work otherwise my son will starve to death oh look at that just got a ten dollar oh oh got a t see that folks just got a damn ten dollar patreon subscriber um and you know what? For, with the ten dollar tier, actually, you do get a shout out on the show. Uh, so shout out to uh, J Justin. I don't know if he wants me to say his full name, uh, but that he thank you, Justin. Um, so I appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> and I, folks, I hope you're enjoying uh jamie here jamie's a good guy he's a good friend very funny comedian follow him where can they Ooh. follow where can they follow you jamie uh jamie grab oh. it Ooh, my bad my bad um i just pissed like a fucking camel Ooh. uh you can follow me uh at on instagram at the uh wait, what's my fucking thing at the jamie grab it okay <laughs> At the Jamie Gravit and uh, Jamie Gravit comedy on TikTok, you know, yeah. um, you follow you follow me around town in my Kia Optima. <laughs> um, hey, you have a you have a car. I don't, I ain't got nothing, dude. Oh uh, no! Well, you know what I do? I've been getting into golf a lot lately. I've been playing a lot of golf. It's been nice. You want to see my my you want to see my golf bag, Dalton? I think you'll appreciate it. It'd be so funny if you just pulled your balls out. <laughs> <laughs> i could do that too yeah look at it look at these nine irons right here check that bad boy out That's a <laughs> i love that yeah isn't that awesome market marketplace 70 bucks dude i love i love white trash uh chic <laughs> white trash chic <laughs> well if you like uh and if you like tits look at the hooters towel it came with look at that Look at that tasty bitch. Oh, nice. I dude, I still fondly remember the uh pro what was probably the worst restaurant experience I had in New York was going to the Hooters by Penn Station with you. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> when, when 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 did we go there? We you and I both were get, like feeling homesick and we're like it'd be nice to like be able to just get some classic Hooters wings. And so we we went and spent like way too much money on Hooters wings because they they jack up the price in New York oh, on that God, shit. I do remember this, and now. it was like all the waitresses were <laughs> fu like fucking rude and didn't even have big tits, and the wings were just like tiny and shitty, and it was like yes, 
and they were dry like they weren't yeah it was was such a awful awful experience and i was like i can't wrap my head around like why these places even exist in this city i was was like it's really fucking strange that um it's made it feel like it was a texas restaurant after going there i was like oh hooters is a texas thing or at least a a southern thing yeah because i i did you ever meet matt Marin? The mm-hmm. host of the comedy fight club. He loves chain restaurants, which I like. I can I understand that. Like I understand the warmth and comfort of a nice Texas Roadhouse or a Outback sure. or like Chili's even. But he always wanted to go to like the fucking Olive Garden in Times Square, and I'm like, I don't. This, <laughs> I'm like, yo, not only is this like over like overpriced for for what like, Very for overpriced. this restaurant. It's worse than any Olive Garden I've ever been to in terms of like yeah. the quality of food. It's like somehow yeah. actually worse than the Olive Gardens in like Weatherford, Texas. Yeah, yeah. The ones in over in the, those places are excellent of the chain restaurants. Yeah, I don't know what the I'll never that's what Stacy would never quit bitching about it when we went and visited because we went and ate at that Olive Garden in Times Square. Because we were just like hurrying trying to get something real quick. It was right there. And the whole rest of the trip, he was just bitching. $25 spaghetti, $25 spaghetti. He could not get over that. that yeah, and it's much, it's crazy because you, know? you could go to like that place that Breck would always take us to, that little Frankie's, and get like a plate of spaghetti oh, yeah. for like less than that. Probably like what, like 14, 15 bucks. And it was like and the, fucking the superb. best you've ever had. It was like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Cra- the dude, the food scene in New York's interesting because like people talk about how expensive it is out there, but it's like I, I had some of the best meals I had was like it's like eight bucks for a plate of noodles. You know, yeah, I, mean? I thought like, so too. That was under that was definitely like not like that was a common misconception for sure. You could eat cheap in New York pretty damn good if you know yeah, what you're looking for. New York, like honestly, when people talk about the prices of New York, it's like really you're only hearing from really wealthy people who are spending crazy fucking money because they have it. There's people yeah. in New York who probably make like $35,000 a year who are, they're doing fine. You know, they're eating dollar slices. They're yeah, hopping, yeah. they're <laughs> hopping the turnstile. They're, yeah. You, yeah know, you, you can make it, you, you know, you, you can like, honestly, like if you're making less than $200,000 a year in New York, you like you're just you can make it easily by uh breaking different laws it's, yeah you do, yeah you break do have to break the law <laughs> yeah. you're gonna have to hop the turn style you're gonna, there's gonna be have to like weird things you gotta yeah. do you well, gotta, the thing is you can you can do anything illegally <laughs> <laughs> it's like, honestly yeah dude i do like that mentality it's like folks you can do anything <laughs> As long as you don't care about the law, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So dude, don't, yeah, don't let, don't be closed off to the world. It's rules, dude. Speaking of, have, have you followed that uh, the BTX Alameda scam, no, Ponzi no, no. scheme, dude? It's it's like it it's it's somehow it's like what if Bernie Madoff was actually retarded. You know what I mean? Like, like Bernie Madoff was actually a like smart guy who knew the system and mm. like got away with this scheme for like decades, probably. And this new one, this Sam Bankman Fried, it it was just just truly like Bernie Madoff with Down syndrome. The way he went mm-hmm. about this this scam, it was it's is all it's all over the news because dude, it's fucking billions of dollars that this dude stole. From Pete, like, yeah, that's, those kind of those guys blow my mind. Yeah, but the Madoff thing. Did you see Madoff's movie that they made about him? With I loved it. It with De Niro. Yeah, it was good, dude. I fucking loved it. Yeah, Wizard of Lies. Yeah, yeah. That's the De one. Niro being like, "It's me, Jew. I'm Bernie Madoff. I'm Jewish. It's me, yeah. Robert De Niro, <laughs> the Jew." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so crazy. Yeah, it's a mind blowing thing to like be that Machiavellian about things, you know. So yeah, crazy. the made yeah the Madoff thing is fascinating because they they there's speculation that he hadn't done anything legitimate since like probably before even nine eleven like it was it was like they there's speculation that it's like fucking over ten years like maybe fifteen to twenty years that 
he had yeah. not actually done a legitimate trade for a long, long time. And, and that's why, like, yeah, I mean, when the shit finally hit the fan, it was well, well, like, what was the total amount? It was like sixty-five billion dollars. Just going. yeah, I mean, it was it was ton, it was tons of money. People, I know it was definitely in the billions. People killed themselves. People were just like, oh, yeah. fuck this dude. Crazy. His that's son, so crazy. his son killed himself. The other son got can't. The only one that's left is the mom, the, the Michelle Pfeiffer character. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. The so, oh. yeah, the son. Oh yeah, I know. Sad. Yeah. Ooh. I yeah, love that the the movie the, the movie gives the kid the two sons and the mom like some sort of plausible deniability, but it, like I'm I watch it and I'm like no they they had to have been in on this they were with that company for what like seventeen years I think that they were working mm-hmm. with him and it's like what you there's no you guys never noticed that there was something weird going on. That he was yeah. doing this, this Ponzi. Your own fucking dad was doing it. Like, I, I like right. my suspicion is that the the two Madoff sons were in on it, and that's probably that's probably why like one of them killed himself because like guilty conscience, and then the other one just his body gave him cancer from it. I mean, it it makes more. Yeah, I mean, all the fucking stress. Yeah, man. You know, I would imagine that they all knew were in on it. I would think. Yeah, I think I think like all of them were probably complicit in some way. Um, yeah, it, it's the only, it, it makes the most sense, especially to be able to, to maybe get the, so many deals. Like he didn't steal that that too much money. It doesn't seem like one man. Yeah, but the 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 this BTX Alameda thing, uh, it's like two different companies. I think uh, is like the the crypto company is BTX, and then the Alameda Research. I don't know how any of this works, but it was like. One company was serving as a bank for the other company, and they were just like funneling money between the two, and just do doing like a crypto Ponzi scheme. So they were getting like all these investors to sink money into this, hmm. and, and just like taking the money basically. And so it's it's like to the tune of like tens of billions of dollars. Yes, yeah, and, and so uh, I think he's he's on trial. He, I think the trial just wrapped. And now they're like waiting for sentencing, but he's facing like a hundred years in prison Jeez. for this. Uh, and the who these people are is what's really funny because they're just like dipshit, like late twenties, <laughs> early thirties, like Adder- <laughs> like Adderall sex freaks, and and so they're yeah. just like cracked out on Adderall. Uh, and they, and they I guess they like understand the world of finance that they became billionaires or whatever. But like the stories about them are crazy. They're just like doing rails of Adderall and having like these gross fucking like ugly orgies. Like, dude, his his like uh sidekick and all this, like his girlfriend, is one of the most hideous fucking people I've ever seen. It's so <laughs> weird Jesus, that th- this weird. woman, like one of the ugliest, most unsightly women I've ever seen, was like having orgies with billionaires on like on Adderall. <laughs> dude, it's uh, the whole thing is crazy. Hell of a drug. Yeah. Yeah. Having having orgies where nobody can even come because they're all on Adderall. <laughs> yeah. This is fucking trying so hard, but he's just sweating. He's just a pool of fucking sweaty bodies and no one's coming. Yeah. But I, I love I love stories like that where people just like millions and millions of dollars is just getting thrown around and lost and then gained. And it's it's always fun to read shit like that and, and then be like I, I I can't even fathom uh tens of thousands of dollars existing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm yeah. just like, yo, if I if I had if I just had ten thousand dollars in my bank account, I'd be like, oh, so this must be like what like you know, like uh the fucking Duke of France lives like. <laughs> yeah, that's what you'd assume, not some like yeah, fucking whacked out twenty year old doing fucking speed bills that he <laughs> yeah like if i if i could if i could go into like if i had the money to go like go into a restaurant and just like not even have to like like if i went to a restaurant and saw uh something was market price and i was just i just ordered it because i knew i had <laughs> like i i just knew i was good for it no matter what that's to me that's well is is like going to a good restaurant point. being being like the branzino's market I'm not even asking yeah. what the market is. Just bring me the Branzino. 
Yeah. I know I can cover this. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. That's yeah, that's how you know you're comfortable as fuck. Yeah. When, <laughs> when you're eating at restaurants with no dollar signs yes, on the yeah, on the that's... menu. <laughs> when you go to a restaurant, it's just a number with no dollar sign. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah. should have wore my fucking suit here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they don't be putting the fucking yeah, 99 or anything next to it. It's just like this one's that's 46. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you ever go to Peter Luger's? Uh, I think I did. That sounds, yeah, that sounds familiar. Is it a steakhouse? Yeah, I never went, but I heard it was like I always heard it was like you had to have a reservation and it was cash cash only. Cash only. Yeah. Oh, then, you no, know, okay, I didn't go to that one. You were telling me about that one, because we went, remember, we went and smoked cigars next door at David. Yes, next yes, door. and we saw it, and yeah, in that, this, this article had come out, uh, I don't think it was right, the, the article came out maybe like two or three years before that, but it was, it kind of put Peter Luger's back on everybody's minds because it was a it was a new like a new york times food review that gave peter luger's zero stars and the review of the restaurant was so fucking stupid that everybody became like interested in it again um and 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 so it kind of like made it popular in a weird way this like weird zero star review that they gave peter luger's um and, and but yeah, I do. The, the weirdest thing about it that I took away from the article was the fact that, like, a there's a plate of tomatoes that's like twenty bucks. And it's just tomatoes, <laughs> and b it's a cash only restaurant, and like, cause the cash only places usually are just sort of like uh, takeout places, like the get it no get it. stands, not like places that it's like hundreds and or maybe even a thousand dollar dinner it's like you want me to pay a thousand dollars in cash yeah, for dinner? yeah like a dine-in restaurant like that i never i never saw those kinds of places as cash only it was always just like counter yeah. like places that was just like a counter if anything those places would be cashless like a nice <laughs> restaurant isn't that weird there's no fucking consistency with that it's like some places you go into it's cash only and then other places it's card only and yeah. I, I was always like, "What? What the fuck is going on?" Uh, I don't know, dude. The fucking world is crazy. I, I did go to uh, Keen's Keen's Steakhouse. That's like a popular one in New York, and they uh, they're known for their mutton chops. And I got those, and I wound up getting the mutton chops. And let me tell you, one of the most overrated and hard to eat pieces of meat. I was so disappointed like especially paying all this money i was like why the fuck did i get mutton chops is it over is it overrated because it's on zero menus that i've ever seen (laughs) (laughs) well i just assumed like because there was like that's what we're known for it's the get the mutton chop the classic original mutton chop and i was like all right i get the mutton chop so hard to eat the bone the the, the way they put on the bone was weird um you know it, it was like a hassle it felt like work you know damn it was weird. Um, but. I'm trying to remember what what was the weirdest thing I ate. Um, there was it was actually, it was kind of tasty but kind of weird. Was this? Uh, there's a candy store in Chinatown, and one of the candies they had was like it was like candy. It was like these little candy like crabs. <laughs> it was like a whole. It was like a whole little tiny crab that was coated in some sort of like hard like candy coating but it was like it was an actual fucking crab like shell and everything and you just like (laughs) it's like yo dude i mean like the chinese do be eating some weird shit i mean they do and you also and you like the you like their cuisine so that makes sense that you went and tried some exotic fucking candy down there yeah i was i'm i try to be an adventure i wish i had the money to go that's the goal with this show is the, uh, I am the, I'm the first billionaire podcaster first off the, the, the Daniel Plainview podcasting. So, I mean, that's the goal is like make enough money that I can become like also the Anthony Bourdain of podcasting is, like, you know, I'm going to fucking Kuala well, Lumpur. No, no, we're, we'll eat, we'll eat good, dude. I can't wait for I mean, we, we, we did treat ourselves to some good dinners. <laughs> Fool- so foolishly, because like, there was never a moment when I could like afford that kind of shit. I was always like, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it's going to be pretty rough the next couple weeks. 
<laughs> yeah, after Jamie and I just splurged for no reason on this badass Korean barbecue so, joint. Such a stupid city. It's such a fucking dumb city, dude. <laughs> You're just like, uh, like, you know, I that that was like the interesting thing. Did you did did you watch that Scorsese documentary that he made with uh, Fran Lebowitz? Mm. He did a uh, like a Netflix series with her a couple of years ago. Um, called pretend it's a city it's really fucking good and it's like her going over <laughs> her history with new york and sort of the history of the city and like what the city is and uh like i don't know if you know who she is. she she's like this really like well-respected sort of like social critic almost like she wrote these two really good collections of essays in the 80s and then just sort of just stopped writing and <laughs> <laughs> it just became like a personality just like this jewish lesbian who complains about things <laughs> uh and, and so she did this scorsese did this documentary with her and she was talking about how she was like you know i moved here in the 70s and i tell people you know my rent was 400 dollars at that time and they go wow you know uh, i can't believe it sounds like it was so much more affordable and she was like let me you need to understand something at that time that was a lot of money and here's the thing and she was like Here's the thing about New York City. No one who lives in New York at any point ever has been able to afford to live in New York City. And I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. I, yeah, think, dude. I think everybody living here is full of shit if they think they're pulling this off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is pretty simple. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, there was like, dude, there were, there were comics that we knew who seemed to have like pretty substantial careers who still had roommates like still had to have and i like i don't know why they did i like maybe it was just out of convenience or that they didn't want to have to fuck around with having to move but you know like i i think i remember like some, somebody like even like soder like dan soder was li him and mike vecchione were living together like well into their success <laughs> like soder was on fucking tv <laughs> well i think it's because because at that point those guys didn't want to live in brooklyn and so like that's like so you're still paying now to for the convenience of manhattan but so there's like damn it I want no they money. they lived in astoria they live in queens oh did they really oh, i'm surprised actually which but... which is the nicest neighborhood it's, yeah it's, 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 i like the story like is so fucking nice dude you don't even feel like you're in new york anymore you feel you feel like you're in just this own like kind of this this oasis yeah this, well, like how williamsburg was i was like williamsburg isn't wasn't accurate of brooklyn at all um yeah well williamsburg kind of got got really gentrified and, and it is it is like a uh its own like kind of reminded me of like south lake <laughs> remember south yeah, lake like addison or something yeah like one of those like ritzy texas suburbs yeah um ritzy. <laughs> What yeah. you don't think you don't think South Lake is ritzy? No, oh, it's ritzy as fuck. I just love that term. Ritzy. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I was Putting about to say, the I was about to say, what kind of fucking money do you have that you don't think the the home of the fighting <laughs> dragons is oh, not shit. they always whooped our Louisville asses. Are you kidding me? Fucking Louisville's oh. poor ass. Uh, fucking, it's all, were, we were, were you bastards. Wait, your school was five A? Uh Louisville, I think. Well, really? Yeah, because Louisville won a bunch of championships in the nineties. Interesting. I didn't know. I didn't know it was that big. I didn't know it was a five A school. Because yeah, yeah. So, yeah so the big I, population. It's like I think the population of Louisville is a hundred thousand. Okay. Yeah, because South Lake always had this weird thing where they had like this great football team, but like because they were five A, it was like not as important, I guess, as like the four A teams. Yeah, something like that. It was like in Texas, it's weird. It's like if your school is too big, it's like it's it's not as big. It's like if, even if your football team is really good, it's not as uh, as big a deal as when a four A team is good. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking yeah. How 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 good we can get our football team with less people available? But South Lake would cheat though. They would go out and get people to get families to move up there so their kids could play ball and they could probably go to college better because i mean they were they were crazy with their football program yeah well wasn't that that was like the determining factor in like those different like 3a 4a 5a was like money and population like how many yeah. just how many students the, in school itself had because mm -hmm. 
I don't I don't think like a five A team has more players than a four A team. It's just like the school itself has more resources and students over and maybe like a taco bueno in the cafeteria yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i can't even imagine how kick-ass their cafeteria was yeah i dude i hate that i'm at that age now or or just having that feeling now where i'm kind of like i mean it would be nice to be back in high school <laughs> <laughs> you know that feel like that feeling is oh, you, get, yeah. the, the, you mean the feeling of like fucking no responsibilities yeah or you, and you learning. Know, no responsibilities on something good yeah no real responsibilities actually learning stuff and just yeah. that feeling of like the future is so open-ended and the possibilities are infinite versus like now where it's it's like the uh the, actually there are no possibilities <laughs> it's over it's you fucking, fucked it up you I fucked, fucked up, up dude. yeah, <laughs> yeah well, no. the, what, what they, the, what's that saying you know it's so true the youth is wasted on the young oh man jesus fucking christ dude it's yeah i ain't, ain't that the truth and i i it, it's so funny how like the nerds and dorks of the world have, have come up with this idea of like the people who peaked in high school and it's like it's always like no i i think if you were hot and getting pussy in high school and everyone loved you that really probably helped you later as you went on in life i don't think i think the people who peaked in high school were guys like me who didn't realize like oh this is like <laughs> the only time that i'm ever gonna like actually just naturally have friends grab it like you, you know and not have to worry about anything and not have to like fight to survive like that's me yeah. you know it, it wasn't like i went out into my adult life and was, like finally discovered myself it was like i just was like oh no this this really sucks <laughs> yeah it, it gets real in a fucking hurry it does man it, it and i don't think i don't think anyone ever comes to terms with it i think everybody's just like putting on appearances and, and trying to make the best of a really shitty situation, which is like, Oh no, this blows being an adult fucking blows. Yeah. Being, you mean life, life blows. Uh, yeah. We're just trying to, we're just trying to maintain until the inevitable tragedy. Yeah. And it's, it, and it, you get like sucked into these like weird situations, like just, ha just having to have a job, like the necessity of that, and what that does to people were like, like I, my day job now is like I work with great people and very like very supportive people. But like the people, the higher ups and like even the people I'm working with at my level, there seems to be like this weird psychic manipulation thing that they're everyone does to themselves where they try to convince themselves they're just really passionate about this, <laughs> the, like this company. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's like really like this your this is your passion is this like yeah, this, this, thing, this this thing you had to do otherwise you would literally starve to death yeah <laughs> like somehow yeah. it's like this faux yeah this faux passion yeah that, i mean and that was all that was the promise with like guys like us or whatever like we tried or are trying to turn our real passion into a job and then realizing like oh no this might be worse like this is killing me yeah this is killing us <laughs> this is not, this is not feasible yeah this is crazy <laughs> why are we doing this oh because uh because the, the other option is more suicidal yeah just talking to people in any day job i've had and they talk about like the car they have and the vacations they go on and 401k and all that i'm like well i don't have any of that because i'm spending all my fucking money driving to open mics <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but yeah who knows man fucking living well fucking I, living I i would be i'm interested in what the internet is now and like how it's changing everything because i think like guys like you and i who probably like got it like started doing stand-up at a time when podcasting had been around but it was it was still like early on in like what the like possibilities were for social media and youtube and all that you know you know what i mean like it, it like as time has gone on like everything is like evolved so much 
that we've seen like what like what people can do using social media yeah i'm like i'm like i'm like interested in in that almost like almost more than going to some like basement comedy (laughs) club and performing for 12 people paying to perform for 12 people like you know what i mean like i I think like i think a lot of people who get into like comedy or any sort of like uh creative or performance like artistic endeavor like might be hung up on like this sort of like traditionalist as purest aspect of it where it's like yeah the live comedy the the fucking the real deal kind of thing the dungeon and, the yeah grungy, dungy comedy room yeah and then you're just spinning your fucking wheels dude trying to feel like just j- bouncing around different pizza places and bars pizza. and it's yeah and then it's in each one of these places you might have eight nine people there to watch what you're doing whereas like you know as silly as it is what i'm doing on tiktok which is looking at titties they're like in in a in less than a week i went from like 70 followers to like 300 just doing that so it's like whatever i post on there is not guaranteed to reach those 300 people, but there's at least 300 people who are there to watch it if they want to. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's the same, like Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all of it. You have like this, yeah, this audience that, that can be found through like all these different uh, channels. And, and so I, I don't know. I just, I find it uh, kind of like antiquated to try and, if you find like if you find yourself like spinning your wheels or caught in a rut doing the these like more traditional things or mm-hmm. you, you know what I mean it's it's like yeah why, no, I've why been not you... another weird I've got this weird project I'm currently doing that uh, has been so much more fun and like uh, it's making me enjoy comedy again because yeah dude going to open mics and and putting yourself through that brutal process like continually being around so many comedians and all the whack wackiness that that is and you know now i'm kind of doing stuff like i feel like more truly for me and what i like doing and i'm enjoying it way much more yeah and you know what you know here's another thing jamie you have a you have a great voice for radio you have a good voice for radio you know i've been doing some voice stuff actually lately i've, I've been doing uh i've been doing um this like commercial uh, these these commercial voice acting things for this for this one guy's company, and I've been doing uh, these radio segments here and there, which has been really fun. Like calling as a character and like ask these questions or like see if my girlfriend's cheating on me or something like that. So it's been uh, it's been kind of cool. Like just dabbling in a few different little things. Nice, that's good, man. Yeah, yeah I mean, voice, dude. Uh, like as I as I like discover myself more and try to figure out like what it is I like and what I really want in life. It is like my dream, honestly. And I think I knew this as a kid voice actor. Really? (laughs) I think like, dude, I have so much respect and like admiration for like real deal voice actors. And, and that, that's like the dream job right there is like, dude, like fucking Hank Azaria or Mm -hmm. like Billy West, John DiMaggio any one of these people is is like that's like the coolest fucking job in the world to me is like going in the booth and just getting to do like 20 different characters for a show or whatever and i don't i don't have that ability i just have like this voice <laughs> so. yeah i really only have, I'm, I'm kind of like a one-trick pony myself i can do a couple maybe little slight different variations but it all i feel like sounds pretty similar to my voice so yeah and you know i mean there are like like john dimaggio is kind of like that like uh because he he did the he does the voice of bender on futurama and he also does like he does jake the dog on adventure time and he he does it he's done a ton of stuff but he has such a unique voice and he definitely can like toy with it and alter it in different ways but it's you can always tell when it's john dimaggio in a show mm-hmm. like if, if you are like if you're aware of that kind of thing like i am i always like can hear his voice because it's, it's such a unique voice i didn't know you liked the you wanted to be a voice actor like that i yeah i, I think it's cool as shit 
um i think it's one it's and it's a great yeah like the pressure of not having to like yeah be around a bunch of fucking like people and just yeah you record it it's nice and quiet and comfortable and then and like your and your face isn't really well known too which is like i think a great part of that yeah you know um so uh somebody recently posted um it was on twitter they posted a picture of clancy brown and said y'all y'all see this motherfucker everywhere but y'all don't even know who he is and i immediately was like that is that's the voice of mr krabs but, but i guess like most people wouldn't even know that um but yeah i mean everybody knows what clancy brown looks like they probably just don't know the name yeah i didn't know the name but yeah i, I recognize i know his uh face just because uh i used to watch like the behind the scenes on spongebob <laughs> hell yeah dude yeah, um, so I don't love watching them getting recorded. Dude, that's another thing. Like, if you get if you get the right cartoon, like those people do, like Tom Kenny and Clancy Brown, all of them. Oh yeah, you're f- printing money, dude. Mm-hmm. Literally. Dude, yeah, it's like Tom Kenny might he might be the richest person alive. <laughs> the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. I don't know, but like, he's definitely got to have a pretty good chunk I mean, of change. Dude. Yeah, he's doing. He's doing fine for sure. Like he's he did well. well you know, he's on a bunch of old episodes of uh, Mr. Uh, Show, yeah. Show, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he started in like that alt comedy scene and then um and he was he was on the when they did that Mr. Show like reboot on Netflix. Mm-hmm. He, was, he was on that. Oh, was he nice? Yeah, he he shows up in like live action stuff every now and then, but he definitely does spon- you know spongebob is his bread and butter yeah i, I mean, can't I, I can't believe it's still on yeah it's crazy it's almost turned into like the it's like the modern day looney tunes i feel like uh yeah kind of and steve steve hill what's his name steve hillenberg the creator <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing are you, back, are you using a back I got, I got a back scratcher going it's out. so funny because you can't even see it on the fucking yeah thing. it just it just looks like i'm stretching but no it looks like you're doing this yeah, I'm I'm ghost I'm ghost jacking I'm jacking out the ghost bone, you know. Um I think Steve Hillenberg, the creator of SpongeBob, when he was on like run, before he died, I think he had a rule that there were like to be no spinoffs. And now that he's dead, Nickelodeon is finally trying to cash in on the possibilities of the SpongeBob extended universe because they they just started a some like a Patrick spinoff like the patrick mm-hmm. star show and it's like a it's like a talk show i think it's like a patrick's variety talk show that he has interesting um but yeah i mean that's dude being a voice I of- with it i, I kind of stopped watching after like season maybe eight of spongebob yeah when you took <laughs> yeah yeah like when you turn fucking like 16 or 17 it's like yeah i might be a little old for this now yeah maybe i should stop watching spongebob i mean it was so damn good those early seasons were excellent i still quote them all the time yeah what well, is it is funny to revisit them as an adult and, and like appreciate them in a new way where, you, where you're like oh these are actually like really really good jokes like, this is dude really it's so jokes. funny just last night uh me and this girl were talking about the the texas song so we wind up playing it the one that sandy sang we were just listening to this song last night oh yeah <laughs> how good that song is you know especially as like i remember thinking about that song when i moved to new york you know because it's so funny because she's just talking about how much she misses texas and the wide open skies and you know, land and good food and shit and uh how she feels like an outsider i was just like oh man that's got some interesting uh it also has weird, interesting Texas roots, and I'm not sure who is affiliated with Texas from that show, but I feel like they always have different, not just Sandy being from Texas, but there's also many other homages and references to Texas throughout, so I wonder if someone with, involved in the show is from Texas somewhere. Maybe. I think Clancy Brown might be from Texas. Really? Let me let's, let me look it up. Let's yeah, see. Let's look it up. Cause I think because in one episode, it leads you to believe that saying that bikini bottom is somewhere in the gulf of mexico outside of texas no you wait no clancy brown's from ohio i thought bikini bottom was supposed to be at the the bottom of the bikini atoll well in the episode where she takes a rocket and shoots out of the water somewhere 
it's she comes from the Gulf of Mexico. And so again, I'm not maybe there's not consistent accuracy, you know, throughout the show, whatever. So maybe the actual location is somewhere like in the bikini at all. But and then, but then there's another episode where Pantera fucking does original music. That's cool. That's crazy. I like that. Yeah. Well, the, there's that. There's those like cartoon conspiracy theorists out there that say it's a, it's actually kind of like plausible. It's a fun theory about the show that. uh because the the U.S. like ran out all the natives on the Bikini Atoll Islands so that mm-hmm. they could conduct like all these nuclear tests, so they just like bombed the shit out of these islands for mm-hmm. for, however, for however long with these nuclear bombs. Um, and so the theory is that the the like radiation, the fallout from that, it is the reason why Bikini Bottom, which is underneath the Bikini Atoll, the reason why all the creatures are, are like walking and talking and doing commerce as they, they've like, mm-hmm. mut- they've mutated into this. Into it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I have heard that theory somewhere. That's actually a pretty fun theory. Yeah. I mean, it's a good way to draw awareness to the like atrocities uh, done yeah. to the b- inhabitants of the bikini at all. <laughs> yeah. The, at, at the hands of the U S government. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good job, Nickelodeon. Really putting one in on the man. Yeah, nuclear nuclear testing is fun because it, it's like, <laughs> yo, we are going to blow the fuck up like some portion of land somewhere, and yeah. it, it is going to do like irrevocable damage to this land and also cause like insane radiation. <laughs> like it's going to make it so fucking uninhabitable for anything. <laughs> it, we because we just want to make sure that. I don't even, what is the goal of nuclear testing? It's like, okay, this, sure, this, will sure kill, it, this will kill this will kill people when we yes, need to this, use it. This, this will definitely fuck up a country, it looks like apparently. After we a successful testing, it'll fuck up anyone we send it to. Good to know. It works. Yeah. Yeah. Um what is so uh I guess we we can we can wrap up here in a little bit, but what's so what's it what's it like in what's what's the Austin scene like nowadays? Uh, man, it's pretty saturated, like New York. Um, you know, with the attention, like with Rogan's Club, obviously, just continue to bring in a bunch of people. Uh, so it is like New York in that way, but no one's paying for mics yet. The first paid mic I have seen though is, has more been like a one item minimum for comics, but so that's slowly starting to happen. And I think it's just a matter of time over the next several years for that to continue, especially if like the industry moves out here or more of the industry moves out here. Um, uh, but there's a lot of mics you can do. I mean, you can do like 30 mics a week here because I will say one difference is, is that all the mics are closer by each other. Like not like quite like New York where you might have to take a subway over. I mean, you can literally just walk around the town and do mics all night. So that's pretty cool. Um, Interesting. But uh, other than that, though, man, I'm really liking my experience in Austin much better than New York. I just like the town in general. I mean, New York, again, it has its fun moments. But, you know, it's at least here, like we're still in Texas. Things are a little easier, a little cleaner. I mean, the homeless is definitely an issue here, which is always, uh, you know, a sight. But um, but I like the town. Like Austin's fun, man. You know, you got to come down and uh, stay stay with us for a week or something. Yeah, I got. Yeah, I guess once once the podcast is making me rich, I'll um, yeah. I'll I'll buy a, a a helicopter and fly out. Yeah, buy a helicopter. Come on out, dude. <laughs> no, I just I get yeah. I'm like yeah, I'm just like rebuilding my life right now, so I don't even know if I have the means to go anywhere just yet. But uh, you know. Uh, stranger things have happened you know people, yeah people spring back i always i always wonder about that like what is you're springing back i'm springing back i mean austin is fun it, it definitely austin has that still has that sort of like college town vibe to it mm-hmm. you know like especially like all, all up and down like six six street and like south congress yeah it's definitely young it's a young town for sure but it's got yeah. cool spots and the music's great you know i love going to don't let music. anyone don't let anyone tell you you're not young i don't i don't know what's going on nowadays with like people talking about like how like 30 and over is, is somehow like fucking geriatric now and it's like <laughs> that that was never i never knew that to be a thing 
like growing up, I there was never I never knew of people in their 30s acting the way people in their 30s do now, which is like old fucking men where they're like, well, yeah. I'm I'm 32, 33. And it's like, I got to be in bed by nine or whatever. And it's like, I remember when my dad was that age, like when my dad was in his like mid to late 30s, he was drinking fucking 40 Keystone Lights a night and staying up till four <laughs> in the morning and then go and then going to work at six in the morning. So, oh, yeah, that's called a problem. <laughs> well yeah but, <laughs> it's, but you dude, know, i'm the same way dude, i'm about to be next next week i'm turning 35 and i've never been more tired in my life i love a good 9 a.m bed or 9 p.m bedtime what are you what are you talking about I've, that's, that is right up my fucking shit right <laughs> <laughs> i guess so i mean i i dealt with after everything that happened to me just being like you know just coma like just not have, like yeah. having having zero life in me uh but like i don't i don't look at um uh, as far like i my my thing with age is like i've talked about this how i think so much of age the way we think about it is determined by like market research and ad agencies and, and like what is to like demo you know like demographics and stuff like that mm-hmm. um because like I, I saw, I dude, I saw this video of this this guy. I think he's like a Maori or something, like one of these like Bushmen, like a tribal New mm-hmm. Zealand guy. And they, they they were asking him like, you know, like, so how old are you? Like, what's your age? And he was like, he was saying, I don't know. He was like, you know, y'all do that shit. You know, y'all y'all keep track of that. And he's like, we don't like we don't do that in my tribe. Like, mm-hmm. he's like, you know, it's just like you know, you see wrinkles, there's gray hair. You know, that's how you know your time is passing. But He's yeah. like, I, I have no clue, like, what my actual age is. And, that, like, I was watching this video and thinking, like, that sounds so fucking nice. To just, <laughs> like, to just, like, to just not have any, like, awareness of, like, what what my age is. To not have have that, like, stamp of, like, day, you know, day, month, year. Yeah. Um, you know, and, the, and then, like, the, the sort of, like, social expectations of like we gotta have this this sure. and this done by this age you know oh, it, well, as, far, as far as that concern i'm way past that, uh, fucking. <laughs> that, but, that it's, but it's arbitrary and like none of it matters anyway because it's like you like everybody's on their own fucking time anyway yeah, yeah. And, and, it depends on, and some people just are naturally more older sold or young sold than others you know what i mean because you'll meet like guys like there's fucking kids out there that like act they're like they're 70 already just by the things that they enjoy and then you see some like really youthful old ass motherfucker you know just living his life you know so it's you know it's i think it's just all about but yeah the people put it on themselves a little bit too you know however age is good though too to like to put things in perspective for me you know like i was thinking about this the other day i'm 15 years away from being 50 that's troubling but also like but in a good way you know what i mean like i'm like oh that's you know, wanna what things do I want to now do? You know, but imagine about- if you had no concept of fifty. How nice would that be? If you just didn't even know what 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 that meant. Fifty years old, you just were in the bush hunting hogs and paint painting your face, getting weird tattoos on your chin. I don't know, dude. I like I like air conditioning. <laughs> i don't know what the climate is like in new zealand it might be nice it might just be like you know it seems tropical and i like i like fucking i like uh i like having a fried chicken place really close by you know <laughs> <laughs> i like not hunting is what i'm trying to say i don't want to run down my food i don't want game you know i don't know yeah i get i get that but there is a like dude if i if i watch something like apocalypto I am oh, like yeah. I'm like yo, take me there. I want to be. No, I, I get that, dude. No, Apocalypto is pretty sick. I, I love that movie. I just watched that again recently, dude. That was a good one. The, it might be the best movie. It's fucking so sick. <laughs> it's so good. It's like it's like damn. How how talented is Mel Gibson? Like he I made, know. dude, he made a movie. He made a fucking master class like action like biblical epic in scope like what that movie is yeah and 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 like casted zero actors like none of those no no one in that movie is a professional actor 
Yeah, none of it is recognizable at all. He it's it's all subtitled out. It's like it's so crazy. It's it's a it's like such a feat of, of filmmaking, and and it doesn't get the respect it deserves because why he ha- he has kind of a bone to pick with the Jews. And, yeah, <laughs> and so now nobody, dude. I got so fucking mad about that the other day. Uh, not Mel Gibson. I he can do no wrong, but uh, there was a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this tw- this Twitter thread where this guy was saying shit like, here's the reasons conservatives can't make good art and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, how are you going to watch Apocalypto and think this isn't good? Like, I don't <laughs> even know. Like, your argument completely falls apart yeah. with, like, just with the existence of that movie. Like, not even talking about, like, all the other, like, con- great works of art made by conservatives. Uh, but just, like, that one movie is is like well this is better than most of what any like lefty artist has like, has made well especially all the horse shit that's just being pushed out by the fucking hundreds and on netflix i mean every day you know so it's like yeah what are they talking about you know if if, but, fucking, if the lefts would grow some balls maybe their movies would have more teeth and meaning dude have you ever seen brawl in cell block 99 no I do. I'm about to change your fucking life, my friend. Really? Yeah. The, the I forget the director's name, but I, I think like he gets a lot of criticism because he's kind of like a right wing dude. Wait, what's it called again? It's called Brawl in Cell Block Ninety Nine. It's got it's Vince Vaughn and Don Johnson. Oh, man, nice. And um, the lady who played Dexter's sister in Dexter, um, dude. The movie? I, it's a movie yeah and it's vince right. vince vaughn plays this like i'll watch it dude. bald tough muscular guy who's just kind of down on his luck and man i don't even i don't even want to spoil this for you it's, yeah, don't spoil. I'll, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll watch that fucking tomorrow the watch the the, the watch all of the movies that directors made brawl and cell block 99 dragged across concrete and bone tomahawk and, and, te- and fucking oh, tomahawk. yo dude again that's that sounds like a uh a food fetish porn but no but there's a reason it's named that and i'm telling you that i'm getting chills thinking about that movie because it's like such an understated quiet movie for most of it and then it i i'm not you just gotta watch well, it i love i love slow movies it's a uh, who who all is in? I'm trying to remember who all is in Bone Tomahawk. I think it was a uh, Richard Jenkins, Patrick Wilson, yeah, Kurt Russell, of course, um, yeah. and, and David Arquette. Nice. And it's you know it's like a classic like Cowboys and Indians story, but it's like really quiet, kind of a grinding movie. Uh, it's really well done, but then it it right. like it it's it's building towards something that you'll you'll understand the title of the movie when you get there. All right, no, uh, I'm not, yeah, all right. Well, Dad, thanks for the Rex. I'll definitely watch those, dude. Yeah, start with Brawl, dude. Bra- when I saw, I, I showed my dad Brawl in Cell Block ninety nine, and when it was over, he looked at me and said, "Why can't every movie be this?" Really? Yeah. That's awesome. He was God, like, what a great validation to get yeah. me to on a movie. He, he was like, this is the coolest movie I've ever seen. Badass. All right. And, yeah, dude, and it's like, dude, and it's like Vince Vaughn is such a good actor. Like he 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 really shows his chops in that movie because like well, not to say because yeah, it sounds like a, a role that you don't usually see him in already. I was just like picturing him bald. I'm like, dude, what? he's bald part. and fucking jack. He's jacked in a way like a '30s boxer was jacked. Oh yeah, you know what I like mean, like like still kind of stocky, but like this, he's probably like more powerful than even yeah. like nate diaz probably like it, it, just a lot of just, power just, in a the, mass, just like a big mass the sheer mass yeah, yeah. uh but yeah he he's amazing it, it's like you see him take this turn as like a dramatic actor in that movie uh and it's like oh vince vaughn's really is fucking good it's Vaughn rocks <laughs> all right I'll, I'll check it out dude for sure i appreciate you uh uh have me do your your pod and it's fucking just just good talking with you man 
yeah it's it's good to catch up yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to get back and i I got a lot of shit i gotta pay off uh you know i'm let them wait let them wait just just let them wait and get a bus ticket to to austin for a few days and come kick it yeah i can try i mean i'm out in the middle of fucking nowhere so there's no bus (laughs) there's no you don't got a bus station no i don't dude there's a dollar general (laughs) <laughs> hey, hey that's something that's something I bet, I bet someone at the dollar general knows where the bus station's at i think i i don't want to reveal too much but i think i have more i definitely have more followers on twitter than the people that are in like the town i'm in right now uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's great uh yeah so i got a lot of it's it, it yeah it's, it's hard to articulate to people like what was going on with me and like yeah by the grace of god and like just the fact that i have like people that were willing to make sure i didn't die like i'm alive but it was it was if left if i was left alone if i just didn't have like anybody that cared i would i would either be just homeless in jail or fucking dead right now (laughs) it sucks it's nice to have people that care for sure yeah big man and, and for the for the purposes of this of the podcast and everything I've been saying online, folks, I actually am homeless. Uh, I live in a box car, and I have to I do have to record these in the lobby of the Days Inn. I forgot <laughs> I forgot I forgot my own mythology that I've been building for the lobby of the Days Inn. <laughs> yeah, they got their Wi Fi set to guests, so I just come into the Days Inn and grab a Danish and a coffee. Yeah, nice. That's a good way around. That's a way to do the system right there. Yeah, but everybody, folks, follow Jamie on all the social. Jamie's a funny, very funny comedian who has reclaimed his own whiteness after years of trying to be a Def Jam comic, I think. We're back. <laughs> and, and folks, <laughs> I, I tell you what, I am, here's the thing. Uh, it's, at some point within the, within the next like week, I'm going to read the first chapter of Genesis. Well, and, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'm about to say I'll text you, or yeah, let's text about it. Let's do the first chapter. I'm down with that. Or you think we do that, or you think we read it all the way through? Read it like, on, live. read it live on the show. No, we, how we long? Well, wait, no. Well, I don't know because how long is the chat? How long is a chapter in the Bible? Because I like sometimes. Well, I mean, some of them they're a paragraph, and sometimes they're like four, 40 pages. So. Maybe we should, yeah, just read a chapter at a time and come back with our assessment and notes. Yeah, read a chapter and maybe pick out the verses we like and then and then see how it goes from there. Because I feel like if I if I yeah. go through... So the first chapter of Genesis is... Your first chapter of Genesis is not long at all. It's, a, definitely... it's like a page and a half. So actually, we probably could do that because then... We could read that, that one. We just read it all the way through once and then like to, just for the beginning and then we could talk about it at the yeah, you know, we can make our own notes or uh, before the pod or something. Yeah, but dude, I'm down if you want to try that sometime. Let's fucking uh, let's do it. Yeah, let's let's yeah. Buy everybody. Stay tuned for the uh, Bible Boys Bible Bible yeah. Bible book. Uh, the Bible, the, yeah, Bible the Bible Belt Boys. The Bible Belt Boys, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do. We're going to, with you, the audience, we're going to read through the entire Bible. Uh, is it, what, what is, is there a translation you want to do? Because I've got this, this is a King James, but. Um, King James, I just feel like it's so confusing, but, but I'm down to do it. But I wait, think I have a, version. I think I have I mean, an NIV somewhere, uh, uh, NIV. I got Bible. ESV, I got ESV, you've got NIV and King James. I think if we both. You know, that's what would be co- maybe cool about it, too, is having us both have different translations because then we can come back and be like, oh, actually, I thought that was interesting because mine worded it, whatever. You know, so that actually might be good to have a little variety. All right. I'll read the King James. Uh, chap- I mean, Genesis chapter one is like literally a page and a half. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it shouldn't be hard. So, yeah, we could do this like whenever you're available next, like next Saturday, maybe or you know whenever yeah yeah maybe saturday or sunday even because i'm driving back from dallas next week I i'm sorry jamie that. did you say sunday the lord's day I mean, bible study can I, can I go to church <laughs> yeah i mean I'm, da- I'm down to do it i'm down yeah, to do right, it on, on sunday yeah so uh everybody i can't this, I, I'm, I'm, this is a good idea i mean this is a good idea 
I, I can't wait to tell my roommate about, oh man, well, I think we're about to do a podcast, Bible study. <laughs> it's all in hell, yeah. It, it's, yeah. I mean, it's something I've been interested in, especially like as I was dealing with like all the, all my medical issues and like that feeling of feeling kind of detached from everything. It, it was like when I started, when I was in psych wards and the only book they had was the Bible that it was like oh i do miss this like there's something yeah. about this that w- it would be nice to like it, like be back in the church yeah so, man let's do it i'm down dude i'll i'll, I'll read it let's fucking i probably need to honestly <laughs> all right I, every, can, I can use a lesson i could use a lesson all right everybody stay tuned for bible boys with dalton and jamie jamie yeah. and dalton and, and this is this is our return to to the divine to grace <laughs> uh <laughs> the gates. yeah well do you, do you have anything you want to plug before we get out of here uh i've got a show next friday up in dallas at the statler hotel uh that's that's about it but other than that you should definitely check out my my band cold play 2 um it's on <laughs> instagram at cold play 2 band um and we're uh we're getting we're about to finish our european tour and then we're going to be doing asia next but in between then we'll be trying to fill up dates in austin and in dallas so okay <laughs> cold play too everybody cold play too yeah cold play too check us out uh we're some have said the, the future music some have said uh divine music as well so okay. uh yeah well everybody uh coldplay 2 jamie grab it on all social media and then please subscribe to the patreon for my channel corn patreon.com slash corn fed with dalton pruitt uh and yeah this was this was fun man yeah thanks for doing this and this this served as a really nice backdoor pilot for for bible boys uh yeah the the bible thumpers yeah Uh, the but the 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 bible thumping thumpers we'll figure it out yeah Uh, yeah. (laughs) um all right well i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and edit this and by that i mean wait for the file to finish converting after it's done and then uh upload it to the internet let me know when you do i'll I'll make sure to share it i'm about to get some lunch we're about to film some stuff here soon for cold play (laughs) too okay cool man Oh, good to see you, man. I'm glad to see you doing uh, doing better. But don't worry about them bills, man. Fuck them. My Dude. goal is to die in debt. Mm-hmm. Die in debt. Fuck the government. Fuck Synchrony Bank. Fuck, yeah. Will- <laughs> fuck Wells Fargo, who even got out of the loan business and sold my shit to another fucking company. Yeah. Fuck, fuck all the... Fuck, fuck my Rich dad. Crap. Fuck my dad and the money he loaned me. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and it would the amount the money he spent trying to help me not die yeah. and, and no nobody heard me say that i'm actually i'm homeless and i did not have help uh <laughs> anyway folks um i'm oh, god damn it the battery okay hold on there we go and stop Just